to Big D. We welcome you to college football presented by Vizio. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. A rivalry that dates back to 1903. Two old members of the Southwest Conference in the Southwest Classic now matching up in the SEC. Arkansas and Texas A&M. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wischusen here with Brock Ewart. Allison Williams will join us in just a moment. How we follow Coach Corso as Lady Liberty, <laughs> I'm not real sure. This is anticlimactic. We apologize for that, but not for these two programs. The no. noise outside of Arkansas, Texas A&M, with two coaches on the proverbial hot seat is that this is a must win. How are they dealing with that noise on the inside? Yeah, I think it's much easier for the coaches and players. On the outside, you're right, and nothing in the month of September has quieted that noise. A collapse in Pasadena for Texas A&M and Kevin Sumlin. I mean, it was. we watched that tape yesterday, and there's four or five, six plays if you just make one of them. And I love what John Chavis said. That scar remains. That scar will always be there after that collapse. I haven't played great the last two weeks either. They've played a half. It's going to take two to win this one today. On the other side, Brett Bielema has never won this matchup with Kevin Sumlin. And don't pretend he doesn't know that. And don't pretend that noise on the outside won't remind him of that if they do not get it done today. An awful lot on the line in the month of September. And Arkansas with Brett Bielema, 0-4 in SEC openers. All four of those losses to guess who? Texas A&M. Arkansas won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. So it'll be the Aggies starting with the football. We are at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington, just outside of downtown Dallas. A Hall of Famer now, the owner of the Cowboys and an Arkansas alum. And Jerry Jones, so happy that this game continues to be played in his stadium. Connor Limper kicks it deep. Kendall Bussey from just inside the two yard line. Close to the 19 yard line and Allison Williams joins us from down in the field and Allison this is a youth movement for the Aggies. Yeah a lot of these Texas A&M players are taking the field for the first time against an SEC opponent. They play 18 true freshmen 10 of them on offense. Offensive coordinator Noel Mazzoni told us it's like running a daycare with all these kids especially at wide receiver a group he affectionately calls the Maroon Goons. Junior Christian Kirk one of the only veterans at that position he said I guess I'm the primary to caretaker then he said I just really try to work with these young guys on schemes and concepts playing with their technique consistently all in an effort to help their true freshman quarterback Kellen Mond and the true freshman will start on play action and he'll float one to a wide open true freshman Jamon Osborne picks up the first down and a gain of 13 yards and Kellen Mond who came on in relief in that UCLA collapse of Nick Starkle who's a redshirt freshman who broke his leg in the season opener against UCLA and had surgery shortly thereafter so now it is Kellen Mond's show also because the senior and backup Jake Eubanek is still recovering from a shoulder injury that's kept him mostly out of action. So it's a true freshman yep. throwing to again a true freshman a sophomore tailback and Travion Williams. It's basically as Allison said Christian Kirk and a bunch of pups. And we're going to learn an awful lot about Kellen Mond and so is his coaching staff today. SEC opener he played his best game last week showed some poise and some patience in the pocket that he had not shown in his previous starts and we're all going to learn together exactly what these freshmen can do. First hand up going nowhere. Williams thrown down by McTelvin again. And that's your guy. That's your NFL guy. You, you may put together that uniform just a little bit. That's Jerry Jones cowboy uniform from head to toe. Something that makes the owner awfully proud. They just do it in Razorback colors and this is the guy that will play at the next level. The 290 pounds are in their 3 4 alignment. A lot of those guys got to be unselfish up front, but he is the difference maker, the playmaker, and sets up a third and seven with that tackle. Under some pressure is Mont. Short of the first down by a yard. So Arkansas gave up some real estate, but they get the stop. Trey Greenlaw is there to make the tackle and here comes the punt group for the Aggies. You're going to see that I think quite a bit today. Paul Rhodes was elevated the defensive coordinator and in some degree because of this game last year or they had a hard time lining up playing sound defense partly because they gave up 500 yards rushing to Auburn and he said I want my guys in the right spot. We're going to you know, rush three. We're going to test the patience of this quarterback this young quarterback 
and just structurally have everybody in the right spot, and they did there. Special teams could be huge in this game as Shane Trapuca, a senior punter and a good one. And that is a layout of Jared Cornelius, the return man, never given an opportunity to catch the football, so that will be kick-catch interference. Ravon Fuller was all over Cornelius, and that should be a 15-yard penalty that should set the Razorbacks up. Personal Great field foul. position. Kick-catch interference. Number 28, kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And that's just not an awareness. Special teams will play. They will play a defining role in this game. I think I'm confident saying that because it's every aspect of it. This isn't just a kicker or punter, and those specialists favor Texas A&M in a big way. I don't think that's dirty or cheap. I think that Fuller, the redshirt freshman, another one of these pups, just had no idea. The bright lights, the SEC competition, his first play in an SEC game just had no feel for where that punt returner was. And he's, and he's saying that he'd give a fair catch, doesn't matter. You have got to give that returner room to run and to catch. Replay may be discussing whether or not this could be a targeting foul. Previous play is under review for potential targeting. And may initiate targeting from the replay booth. <laughs> Let's take another look. Now, if you are a return man looking up for the football, you are by definition defenseless. And if it's forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless receiver, yes. and that's hard to yeah. argue if they do come away with a targeting foul there, then that would mean an ejection wow. on the first special teams play of the game for Fuller. And these targeting calls are up, and up pretty significantly. And, and you know what I like about this, Bob? And we had a game earlier this year where it was initiated from the booth, and I think we saw some hesitancy in years before. Well, that booth wants to allow the guys on the field to do their job. They're some of the best that you're going to find. This conference is right there near the top, but, but if they don't have the courage upstairs, Right, to make this call and to initiate, it will not change. And I said it the last time this occurred, this is the way that you create change. You do it from the booth, they get a chance to look at it, they can slow it down. That is such a bang-bang reactionary play on the field, and I think this is the right move and the right call, and Mr. Fuller's day is going to be done. After video review, we do have targeting, number 28 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty is enforced. Number 28 is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. Rogers Redding is the national coordinator of football officials, does such great work with us dealing with the rules as well, and he recently sent all of us an email, a targeting report, basically, and how the replay booth is starting to play a bigger factor in making sure that these shots don't occur. Last season, 230 games, 44 targeting fouls were called, nine overturned, a net of 35 enforced. This season, 75 fouls have been called to this point, 20 overturned, 55 enforced. So a much higher percentage yep. of enforced fouls, and also targeting fouls initiated by replay. 15 so far this season have Good. been initiated by the replay booth. So you're talking about 25% or so of the targeting fouls are being initiated by the replay booth. You can see that last year to this point, it was only nine. They are becoming more assertive, and it's having an impact. And Brock, it ought to. That is the play you need out of not just college football, all of football. Change the strike zone. You're not going to do it unless you call it. And sometimes those guys on the field have such a harder time with everything they're evaluating. I've got a new appreciation having put that uniform on and, and officiating the spring Georgia spring game as a headlinesman, and it happens so fast. Those guys upstairs have the views that we have. And very appropriate there to make that call from the booth. Well done. So now it's a senior at quarterback, of course, Austin Allen, keeping that tradition going for the Razorbacks, taking over for his brother Brandon. Back to back. Allen's at quarterback, and it's nice when you can hand it off to David Williams. He picks up seven on first down. The grad transfer from South Carolina. Makes it second down and short as we take a look at the senior from Fayetteville. He's poised. I, I, I think the numbers don't tell the story this season. He's disappointed. He missed four or five shots against TCU. He's a good, accurate, deep thrower. His brother led the way before him. I know what that feels like. 
Also know what this feels like, getting a little wildcat, letting somebody else run as he spreads out wide to receiver. And that's a true freshman, Chase Hayden, lining up to take the direct snap. He's got room. Darren McFadden made this famous with the wild hog, and Chase Hayden down the sideline behind the fullback, Kendrick Jackson. That works to perfection, a first down to the 36-yard line, a gain of 22. And I'll tell you what, that is back-to-back -back blocks out on the edge. It's Austin Cantrell, the tight end, on the first down run, and you can see it right there, the edge in the containment. He does it once again. If you went on the edge in that time against Cunningham, the senior defensive end, it's right there, right in your view, right in front of you. If you could hold that block at the point of attack and allow these speedy freshmen like Hayden to get out into space, advantage Razorbacks. Two tight ends and a flea flicker. Back-to-back -back hybrid plays. Almost a one-handed catch. As Deion Stewart couldn't hold on. We heard that there were some wrinkles when we talked to Brett Bielema last night, and they have certainly followed through with some wrinkles, to say the least. Yeah, that's your shot play. In between the 40s, get used to seeing it. And once you find that tendency, whether it's college or professional football, Danny knows you get inside the, that 40 range on early downs. You love to take your shot that was in the game plan. You have a bye week to prepare. Dan Enos is a good one at finding those creative shots. That's just a misfire of the pressure, I think, as much as anything, leading to the incompletion. Cornelius, first down and more. Jared Cornelius had a back injury that slowed him all through fall camp and at the start of the season. They said he lost about 10, maybe 15 pounds since the TCU game two weeks ago. How's that possible? I don't know. <laughs> Being 22? Yeah, Brett Bielema said, that's a diet. I got to get me some of that. Not 42. <laughs> but I guess when you're 22 and you eat appropriately, and you actually run, and his back held him up from the conditioning he needed. It showed two weeks ago against TCU. Off to a good start here. And good to see that he shook off the hit that he took targeting that set this drive up. Williams inside the 10, inside the 5, and it's first and goal for the Hogs at the 1. Well, that's just good old-fashioned ISO. We see a little power in, in here. Arkansas is hurrying up to the line. A good move here. But we've seen the whole gamut is and it's trying to run defenders, and Arkansas is trying to quick snap. Williams flags down, and he gets driven back. Legal substitution on the defense. Fairly tap the distance to the double line. First down. And someone doesn't like it. He didn't like this defense. He's getting blocked. He's got coverage that is lazy and not getting into their drops. The defense there that can't get off blocks. And this is the game. Now, this is the area when you really want to study Arkansas. This is since their game against AM last year. And look at it. Worst in power five inside the five yard line. Stark contrast. From the days up in Madison, Wisconsin, they've got to get this aspect of their game going to finish drives. Hand off to the fullback into the heart of the defense. Kendrick Johnson, did he get there? He did not. And the woes of running the ball and just trying to change the line of scrimmage inside the five-yard line for Arkansas continue. It will be second down and goal inside the one. We got a good one right in the middle. John Chavis knows it too. His big D tackles that Coben Henderson is going to be in a fight all day long right there. Yeah, big boy. Right there, 92, 88. Those two guys against Frank Regnow, the All-American candidate center. It's going to be a wonderful matchup to watch. Wildcat again. Chase Hayden lines up to take the direct snap. The true freshman wanted the football, trying to clap his hands. It didn't come from center Frank Ragnow. And it might be a false start. This will change things for Arkansas. False start. 51, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I don't know about 51. I think it was the entire left side of that offensive line. And welcome to a freshman. Change in cadence and everything you're going to do down there. It gets loud. This is the area to focus on. Man, this is the area, if you're Arkansas, and you want to win time of possession, and you want to run the ball and control it, you've got to find touchdowns, especially first and goal. Last week, Arkansas lost, or two weeks ago, I should say, to TCU, 28-7. to This was the area of the field killed them. that killed them. High formation with Williams back in as the tailback. Play action, Austin Allen. He's looking for the pylon in the back corner. He drops it in. That's a Razorback touchdown to Jared Cornelius.
So what do you do, Bob? If you know it's an area of concern and you've got a bye week, what you do is you go back to your seniors. You don't go to a true freshman. You like it. Clearly the feet in. That's good in the NFL stadium here. But when push comes to shove, in a game in conference, you got to win against a team you haven't beaten before. It's nice to have the wrinkles with the freshman. It's nice to run a flea flicker. But if you're going to win this game, it's going to be your best players, your seniors, like receiver Jared Cornelius and your senior quarterback hooking up in the big moments. They may go to review just to make sure that Cornelius Pass got his foot down. down. This play is now under video review. They're going to make sure that he didn't barely with that toe step on the line. Let's take another look. See if you see just a little bit of red in between his left foot and the sideline. Now it was called a touchdown on the field. That back foot is dragging. Does that back foot drag before the left foot's toe you got to worry about? And when does he have full possession of the football? If he doesn't have full possession of the football, when that back foot is dragging, that's irrelevant. It's whether or not you think that front foot may have stepped on the sideline just as he caught the ball. Are you seeing anything from that replay and these great looks that we've had, Brock, no. that would say conclusive video evidence, indisputable, to overturn the call on the field, which was touchdown? I mean, the pellets start to go up. The ball is in his hands, in the left toe as well. And the nice thing is we've got <laughs> a pretty large jumbo screen. Well, I don't know, about 80,000 people saw it in, in, full, in a view that you're not going to see in any other stadium in America. Well, we have <laughs> as many video officials, unofficial yes. video officials as you could ever have in a stadium that seats about 100,000 with, yes, yeah, some sizable monitors to look at replays on. The sophomore kicker, Colin Limpert, who took over for Cole Hedlund, knocks through the extra point. How about the response for Jared Cornelius as a punt returner takes a headshot. Targeting set up Arkansas with field position. Allen to the senior Cornelius. Gets the Hogs on the board. Welcome you back with a look at this historic rivalry matchup brought to you by Wendy's again. A rivalry that dates back to the old conference rivalry back to 1903 between Arkansas and Texas A&M. Although since joining the SEC, A&M, they've won some nail biters, but that is something that has Brett Bielema catching a lot of criticism from sure. Arkansas fans. And this isn't unique in this game over the last four years. Arkansas has jumped out to a lead. In fact, had a two-touchdown lead a few years back, lost in overtime, an eight-point lead two years ago. With three minutes to go, lost in overtime. It won't be how this one starts. This one's all going to be about the big plays in the fourth quarter. Kristen Kirk from the goal line. Bottled up. Didn't even make it to the 15. Let's head back to Adnan. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Good afternoon. CarMax Drive, what's possible? Update. UNLV and Ohio State. JT Barrett and Paris Campbell will do all the work. It's the first time the Buckeyes have scored on their opening drive since November 12th. That's a span of seven games. 69-yard touchdown. Ohio State up 7-0. Bob, back to you and Brock. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. A flag on the return. Mm. I'll tell you what you felt here through two possessions is you see a little hesitancy. And it should be no surprise, as Allison said, so many youngsters, 10 freshmen playing in the two deep, Kellen Maltman leading them. But just a little hesitancy from AM offensively, defensively, and Arkansas very sound in their scheme. Looks like a team coming off of a bye week versus a very young football team right now on the other side. If there was a flag on the return, they picked it up. Kellen Mond out of a pretty clean pocket, shot down the sideline, not there for Osmond, who has been his go-to target to start again. There's McTelvin again getting pressure. You know, Aguin is lucky that he is even in the uniform he's in and has an NFL future. 2011, Melvin Aguin lost his grandmother. We'll talk about that in a moment tonight on ABC. Big Ten battle between three and O teams. Trace McSorley, Saquon Barkley, Penn State, Iowa, the opponent at Kinnick Stadium, 7.30 Eastern, also streaming live on the ESPN app. There goes Travion Williams for about four yards. Third down and six for AM at their own 19 yard line. Third and seven, the previous third down. You rushed three, you kept everybody. Look at this. They want to stay so sound defensively. 
third and six, you try to disguise, show a little pressure. I think more than anything, you just want to rush those three, get everybody in those zones, and let the young quarterback make a decision. There's McTelvin again after the quarterback again. And wide open! It's Christian Kirk. He got loose. Blown coverage to the house. Touchdown AM. Zone coverage is wonderful. Within the standard two or three seconds of a play, you have a quarterback that can create those secondary plays in Texas A&M. Well, it started with Manziel doing that better than anybody else in college football, and that broke down the coverage on the other end. Kevin Richardson, the safety in the back, loses where Christian Kirk is, who is on a little over route. He takes it deep. Mon sees him. Big explosion play for Texas A&M. Daniel the camera hooks the extra point through. We are deadlocked at seven, and there have been some explosive plays for both offenses. The fifth career touchdown pass for the true freshman, Kellen Mond. Doesn't get much easier than this. Arkansas wearing Cowboys replica uniforms, of course. Arkansas alum, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year. And he was a co-captain back on the Razorback 64 national title team. He said, I don't know that I've had anything happen to me that has been as meaningful as the gesture from Arkansas wearing these Cowboy uniforms. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, he didn't like what uh, he saw in that explosive play defensively. And it's all wonderful when you're in zone coverage. And look at pre-snap here. Now, these guys are going to lock up and play outside, and they're going to lock up into their man. You know what? And within the basic structure of the play, look at it. You've got everything covered up. We're accounted for. But all of a sudden, when Mon does this, look what, look what happens to the coverage. Look what happens to Coley. Look what happens to the other safety there, Ramirez. They lose sight. Christian Kirk, a tremendous awareness. And as the kids like to say, he gone. <laughs> Uh, let's see now. I don't know if a 41 year old should say that. I may never say that yeah, again. Yeah, I, I would back off. I, I, I didn't play that well. I'm trying to sound hip, but he gone. It's not you. I think the Burberry tie is already a tell that hip <laughs> is not your thing. Stay in your lane. Play action for Austin Allen. Throws it to no man's land. It'll be second down and 10 after we check in again with that man. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Updating you on Kent State and Louisville. Fourth and goal, Lamar Jackson, right? No, Malik Williams will take it in for the three-yard touchdown. By the way, I thought Brock was going to say, as the kids say, it's lit. Bob, back to you. <laughs> We're going to try and quell all of that, Adnan, if we can. As Brock said, stay in your lane. I got this little voice in my head on one side that says, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. The other side says, no, show a little personality. You can do it. <laughs> you, you listen to the left shoulder instead of the right shoulder. <laughs> Next time, lean right. <laughs> True freshman Chase Hayden in the backfield once again. Toss sweep. A couple of yards. It'll bring up third down and long. Another true freshman, Miles Jones, who is a good looking corner, came up to make the stop for the Aggies. Earned the right to rush the passer. Here you go, John Chavis. On the other side, Paul Rhodes wants to play conservatively, and he's real frustrated. The structure of his defense broke down. But John Chavis says, nope, my kids take on my personality. Defensive coordinator, been doing it a long time in this league. And yeah, if they play good defense on first and second down, I'll turn it loose on third. Go back to that UCLA tape. They blitzed Josh Rosen incessantly in the first half. They got the big lead, and it was a lot of four-man rushing. The third quarter and early fourth quarter and that allowed Rosen to get back into a rhythm. You wonder if he would have backed off again given 2020 hindsight. See what he does today. Now he's going to rush four here first. It is just a straight four man rush. Allen still under pressure. Has to throw it away to avoid taking a sack. Say Coven Henderson all over Austin Allen. And I'll tell you why he rushed four, because he's watched the tape like you and I did yesterday, and he's seen a right guard and right tackle struggle. This is just a simple little Number stunt. Number eight of the offense. He and threw a forward pass from the pocket with no eligible receiver in the area. The penalty places the ball at the spot of the pass with loss of down. Fourth down. And you, that's a great look at staying inside the tackle. Nobody there. That is why you're going to compound that third down stop. 
an incompletion with the with the grounding penalty. But you know, early downs probably shouldn't be surprised. Let me see if my four big guys can do it because if they can't, then I'm not going to be vulnerable down the field with Austin Allen. Right side of that line still a work in progress for Arkansas and a poor decision there to set up your special teams on your goal line. Blake Johnson set to kick it away. Christian Kirk just as lethal as a return man as he is as a wide receiver. He's going to let this one bounce though. And it's going to take a great Arkansas hop. Out of bounds at the 31 yard line of Texas A&M. It becomes a 52 yard punt for Blake Johnson. Back to the true freshman, Kellen Mond, when we come back. Oklahoma State, they could be a team that at the start of the season, not many believed could be a college football playoff team. They've got Bedlam at home later this season. And boy, is Mason Rudolph off to a start or what? They will score. It will be about their defense come November. They have put up pinball machine numbers so far. But that TCU defense, pitch and catch to Jamon Osmond, that might be about as good a defense as they'll see this season. Well, they're sound. And Gary Patterson knows that scheme inside and out. They recognize they will do things to confuse Mason that he has not seen yet this season. I don't think they will slow them down. That'll be about Oklahoma State's defense, I think, throughout the course of the season and even tonight. Travion Williams in motion. Instead, it's a straight handoff to Keith Ford. And that will pick up the first down for the Aggies. Dijon Harris eventually drove him back, but not before he got well past the line to gain. There will be yards to gain for Texas A&M today. There, there simply will. Arkansas loves this 3-4 defense. They love limiting the big play, but the strength of theirs, only three explosive plays all season long before Christian Kirk gets out. There are opportunities and lanes to run if you're patient. Travion Williams, maybe for a yard. And Allison coming into today, the Arkansas defense was the only FBS team that hadn't allowed a 30-yard explosion play or more. Well, they gave one up to Christian Kirk on the last possession. Yeah, and after giving up that touchdown, Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, went over the adjustments they needed to make, what led to that touchdown. And then he told them, you got to move past it. He said, our offense is playing well. It's a tight game. It's going to be a tight game. We have to do our part. He said a few times, success on us. Not them. He said that was not us. We are smarter than that, and you have to get right back out there and get back to it. Well, we'll see how they respond here. They have forced second down and nine. Play clock down to seven. Alan Mon getting his team set. Play clock down to two. Well protected, only a three man rush. Threw it into traffic, and Trey Greenlaw had a chance at an interception and couldn't haul it in. Be careful young pup one of the things you're going to learn with experience there they motion Kirk across they want to try to get their best player one on one they don't and look at his eyes his eyes never leave the target and you do that against a veteran like Greenlaw a three year starter he's going to read those eyes and nearly comes up at the pick third down and nine. Arkansas shows blitz they rush five Mont. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. The blitz gets home for the Hogs. It's a six-yard sack. Austin Caps finished off Mont. It wasn't until the fourth quarter a week ago that Paul Rhodes brought a five-man pressure. I said, is this what we're going to see? And he said, well, maybe a little bit different. Last week ago, it was a senior quarterback at TCU, and this time it is a true freshman on third and nine. Paul Rhodes had watched him on the previous third down escape, make a big play down the field, was not going to let him get into rhythm. I like that call defensively. Do not let a young quarterback get comfortable. Mix up that clock in his head. Wobbly low kick. Cornelius, fair catch inside the 20-yard line. Let's get you today's Aflac trivia question. This is a good one. Jerry Jones, the third Arkansas alum to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Who were the first two? They are names you will recognize. One was a wide receiver, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying thank, to be nice. Thank you, I, I thank you for attending the production meeting well, last night. This is <laughs> East Coast, Northeast versus West Coast. <laughs> one wants no clues or hints. And one just can't help himself. <laughs> just keep playing along like you don't really know. <laughs> Austin Allen inside his own 20-yard line. 
Devois Whaley picked up about five yards, and it looked like three and a half, four yards after contact for the 216-pound sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. His hometown got 47 inches of rain during Hurricane Harvey. So to say the least that he, going into Arkansas's opening game, was worried. Travion Williams, by the way, the lead tailback for Texas A&M, he's from Houston. His mom watched the UCLA opener from a shelter after being evacuated via helicopter after Hurricane Harvey. So our thoughts and prayers continue to go to everyone that has been suffering through this hurricane season. As Whaley Crab crawls, lost the football, but it looks like he was down. The officials say he was down at least two yards before the ball came out. Armani Watts tripped him up. And clearly the elbow is down here. This is a nice job. You've got to do this within the system. You have got to, I know the play is designed, and if everybody does their blocks, then, you know, that's fine, and you can hit that thing hard. But over the first couple weeks, I've seen running backs just try to do it on the whiteboard. And that's great early, but there also comes time where you have to just be willing to cut back. Cole Kelly now in at quarterback, and he's going to run the football on third down and easily pick up a third down conversion and more out to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 13 for the six foot seven, 270 pound backup quarterback, Cole Kelly, the redshirt freshman. You know, I love to do the little lie test on the field. And I saw that on paper and I thought, come on, that is the most gigantic quarterback, not named Jerry Lorenzen I've ever seen in person. And he's six foot, I mean, he may be six foot eight. He is gigantic. And you give him a lane like that, just fall forward, big man. And that time he actually had a crease to run through. He was on the sideline standing next to Jalen Merrick, who's a backup guard, who's 322. They looked about the same size. Allen back to throw, off his back foot, floats one up the seam, and it's dropped. Cheyenne O'Grady had it, knows he missed a big play. And where are we at? We're right around the 40-yard line once again, that real estate where if you've got a good play-action shot, you want to hit, and that is one that Cheyenne catches. I'm talking about one of the top tight end recruits in all of America. I love these tight ends for Arkansas. And under duress, Austin Allen, a week ago, two weeks ago against TCU, he was under throwing those, not giving his guys an opportunity. That one is a catch and run, and he may have scored. Screen. Not there. Getting caught up in the wash was David Williams. Now it's third down and 10, and Austin Allen took a shot, and he is slow getting up. And he might not be okay. Let's take another look. He looks like he was really shaken up by the hit he just took, holding onto the football to set the screen up. Nickel pressure right off the blitz, and you're doing your part to try to draw that pressure to you as you see Kiki and his 290 pounds land on his head. Austin Allen trying to shake it off, third down and 10. Four-man rush. Long throw to the sideline. He's got his favorite target, Jared Cornelius. Leading out of the nose is Allen, but I think this is the last time on a third down pa passing situation you can see Chavis just rush four. That is just not in his nature to do. He's trying to be conservative. He's got young corners, although that's Oliver, the sophomore. That's what Cornelius could not do a week ago. A lot of it was press man. He could not separate. That is as soft a coverage and easy a pitch and catch between two seniors on third and ten that you're going to get. And Austin Allen bloodied. On that hit from Kingsley Kiki two plays ago, tough as nails, picks up the first down. Jet sweep. Finding a cutback lane and getting loose is Jordan Jones. Stays in bounds all the way down to the 15 before he is finally bumped out by Miles Jones. A gain of 30 for Jordan Jones. And you know what you do if you may drop an incompletion on a play action pass as Cheyenne right on your edge there. Cheyenne O'Grady, the sophomore tight end, the young tight end, he doesn't let a negative bad play affect him. Instead, he sets up that entire play in tremendous patience there for Jones. Allow the blockers to get out in front. Put your foot in the ground. And make an explosive play yourself. It's 
Straight handoff to Williams. Busts inside the 10, down to about the six yard line. And looks like they'll mark him down at the seven, a gain of eight. Second down and two coming at the seven yard line of Texas A&M for Arkansas. Once again, really good patience here. You know what quarterbacks love, Bob? When they get a chance to show everybody else how tough they are. As you see Allen come on the field and the big man come back on, whether it's Allen who's bleeding out of his nose, whether it's Kelly, the 270 pound tight end, you wear a red jersey an awful lot. You don't get to show your teammates just how tough you are, but that resonates with everybody in that Arkansas uniform. David Williams to the right of Cole Kelly, who's now in a quarterback. Kelly tries to do it himself. Straight quarterback power, and he's got a first down at least. Inside the five-yard line, Landis Durham drove him back, but it is first and goal for the Razorbacks. Well, Bielema did say to us yesterday, he's got a new opportunity, a new personnel group. He wouldn't give me all the secrets. Gave me a few. And look at Brett, he's wanting a measurement there. <laughs> he didn't quite divulge the 6'7", 270-pound Wildcat. He tried the true freshman early down there in the red zone. You remember that little scat running back. And now you're back to your roots, man. you got a bye week. Use every weapon that you've got on your team. You tried to weasel tried. out of him as best you could, and he wasn't giving it up. Tenth play of the drive, first and goal. Williams. Down to about the two-yard line where it will be second down and goal. Now already, Arkansas is one for one in the red zone. But last week, they missed a 20-yard field goal. They missed a 23-yard field goal, or two weeks ago, I should say. They tried to run at TCU and couldn't do it. We'll see if they get another snap off here before the end of the first quarter. Probably not. So they will start the second quarter, Brock, right where they had yep. their most difficulty in that loss two weeks ago to TCU. Yeah, it was a 7-7 game, and he missed a chip shot field goal. Right? I don't think we're going to see many field goals again. I think you're going to see a commitment over the next three plays to get back to who you are. you got to buy a week to figure it out, and they're going to continue to run, and Bielema's going to continue to talk. Time of possession right there at the top of your screen up on the big board here in Dallas. Well, the Hogs, it's tied at seven on the scoreboard, but they have had the ball for more than, or about as twice as long as Texas A&M so far, and they are about to head down to the two-yard line, facing second down and goal to open up the second quarter. Bob Shoes and Brock Hewitt, Allison Williams here in Arlington for this now annual rivalry game that starts the SEC schedule for both Arkansas and A&M. And big boys in. Seven different guys have carried the ball over 100 yards rushing for Arkansas, and they will stick with the big quarterback, Cole Kelly. This Wildcat formation. Kelly at 270, David Williams at 230 to his right. He'll throw it, 270 to 230. A little flip for an Arkansas touchdown. David Williams, as easy as could be. I should probably change that. It's not a wild card, wildcat. He's not a running back. He's just a big old quarterback that gives you the advantage and the opportunity to move the pile, but he's fully capable of this. He's also their backup quarterback. You can see the wonderful awareness, and there's a reason that Brett Bielema is 3-0 off of bye weeks. You get back to who you are and what you are, what you have recruited, where you have advantages that you think in your roster, where you can take advantage of mismatches physically. And no surprise to get back to their roots of being a run-first team. Paul Kelly's second touchdown pass. David Williams' first touchdown reception as a Razorback, the grad transfer from South Carolina. You can have all your devices fired up there. Excellent games all during this week four of college football. And this one off to a good start. Arkansas trying to break a five game losing streak against Texas A&M. And they have the touchdown lead. And it will be looks like a touchback as Clyde Chris will take a knee. Let's head back to Adnan again. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Just want to update you on the first big surprise of the day. NC State against Florida State on fourth and goal. Looks like he didn't get in, but he did get in. So the Wolfpack currently up 10 to nothing on ESPN2. Concern already for the Seminoles, especially with James Blackman struggling as a freshman quarterback. Bob? I know the sentiment's been, well, they'll be fine. Florida State's got an elite defense, so many people there. But in Jimbo's system, if you don't have a quarterback, that is a quarterback-led team. A head coach that was a former quarterback. Everything funnels through the quarterback. And when that is an unknown, everybody on the team can get awfully nervous. 
That's a true freshman at quarterback for Texas A&M. Kellen Mond now looking to answer. Straight drop back. Only a three-man rush, so he can buy some time. A late rusher comes and forces the throw away. Dropping seven, eight into coverage gives the true freshman nowhere to go. But he makes a veteran play. It'll be second down attack. Yeah, and there was nowhere to go. And this is the strength, and this is what you want to do if you're Arkansas defensively. You want to just mix that clock them on. They're trying to hurry up a snap. Play action. A little wide receiver screen that's dropped. Aaron Hansford, the tight end, had it in his hands and couldn't haul it in. So now it will be third down and ten. I mean, everything you're trying to do to Mons here, structurally, defensively, if you're Paul Rhodes, is to not give up the big play. Make him earn it. Yeah, there's going to be some yards and some completions, but ultimately there'll be a drop, ultimately a throwaway, ultimately something that puts you into an advantageous situation, just like this at third and ten. And they'll rush three again. Mon forced to check it down. And the pursuit is there. Nowhere to go for Travion Williams. It might be a vanilla defense, but on that drive, and that three and out worked to perfection for the Hawks. It's different. It's three down. It's not Tampa two, but there's so many. It's Pete Carroll in Seattle playing cover three. I'll give you some completions. I'll give you some yards, but you will make a mistake. You're going to drop a pass. You're going to put yourself into a situation where this is all you got on third and ten. And I can rush three and keep eight in coverage and keep everything in front of me. Just three explosives coming into this game of 20 plus yards. Gave up one early to Kirk on a, on a, on a breakdown on a scramble play. But outside of that, this defense is playing exactly the way that Paul Rhodes wants to coach them up. Shane Trapuca gets away a wobbly kick. It stays inbounds for Texas A&M and buys them a little bit more real estate, but not a good kick from Trapuca. 39-yard line for Arkansas when we come back. But number 61 back in 64 for the Hogs, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. He was a captain on that Razorbacks team that went 11-0 in the regular season, won the Cotton Bowl 10-7, won the national title. An all Southwest Conference offensive lineman, three time Super Bowl champion, and now a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's got that mustard jacket to wear for the rest of his life. Mm. In the days when you could be a 210 pound offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to be a 270 pound quarterback. Austin Allen back in to take over this drive. Traps a handoff to Chase Hayden. And getting, that is a two yard game getting back to your roots and this was the opening drive of the game get back to your power formation You've got some big boys. I think some excellent tight ends and fullbacks power you block down you pull two extra guys around Good patience and awareness there from Williams to find the hole. Here's your little lead ISO Right same kind of concept except for this time your center you want to get to the second level your fullback He is leading up an isolation play on the linebacker some work, some pads, a lot of hitting the last two weeks in Fayetteville during their bye week. Play action for Allen. Wanted to set the screen up or at least dump it off to his tight end, and now he simply has to throw it away. Well diagnosed by the AM defense. Dalen Mack gave a shot to Austin Allen, but a good job by the true freshman linebacker, Anthony Hines, to stay in coverage yeah. on the tight end. Yeah, it, I know what you said. It had a feel of a, of a screen, but that's only because Mack took the right guard, Ty Clary, and drove him eight yards back right away. So it looked like Allen was retreating, trying to set something up, and maybe the guard and the tackle would let go. But nope, that was all about Dalen Mack. Big defensive tackle there. The Texas A&M is now, they get into that third down situation where, like I said, I don't expect Chavis to be patient much longer. I expect some pressure, and I expect them to heat it up defensively. Three down linemen. But five rush. Allen out of the pocket. Down he goes. The pressure comes. And Landis Durham gets the sack. Yeah, on third and eight or third and ten on the previous possession, you're just playing into the strength of Allen and Cornelius against freshman corners. If you just rush four and play zone, that time some man to man. And Hines is fast. He does not get home. But number 19 is electric. The guy that they were bragging about. In, in the meetings this week, a guy they got to get more of. He forces Allen up into nowhere. One and a half sacks for Landis Durham now on the season. There's Kirk back to receive the punt. 
jumping into the neutral zone was AM. Kirk with a fair catch, but there is a flag down. So let's see if Arkansas opts to re kick. That was a pretty good punt from Blake Johnson, so yeah, with, I can't imagine that they hate receiving. the field position. Yeah. 45 yard punt, no return. I think with Christian Kirk receiving inexperienced punter inside the 20, you may take that. But you also have a fake or two in your arsenal that you have worked on during your bye week as well. But yeah, you take them, you pin them inside the 20. Offside, receiving team. Penalties decline, the total plays the first down. Well, we thought Texas A&M would have the advantage here in special teams for Kevin Sumlin. It's not worked out that way. You know, some hidden yards lost for Texas A&M. They're the ones with the veteran specialists. Trapuca, an excellent punter, has not gotten off to a good start. Time now to answer our AFLAC trivia question. Saw Jerry Jones up in the owner's suite here at AT&T Stadium, a third Arkansas alum to be inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The other two, Hogs with the mustard jackets, Lance Allworth and Dan Hampton. And this play blown dead at the line. Prior to the snap, ball start. 65, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And this is what you count on. I was telling you the story yesterday in meetings when I went to Indianapolis and played against the Tampa 2 defense. I was like, man, this is easy. There's a lot of completions all over the place here. Yeah, well, that's fine. Wait till there's a negative and wait till you get back up and wait till there's one incompletion or a holding call. That is the structure when you play conservatively defensively as Arkansas likes to do. Those are the mistakes that Texas A&M can't afford. Ford thrown down at the 10 yard line. Nowhere to go. Randy Ramsey at that razor outside linebacker position came knifing through and now it's second down and long. And that is a tough one there. Mons a little surprised he doesn't pull it, but he doesn't pull it because, uh, well, not only is uh, Ramsey in the backfield, his buddy Greenlaw stunts outside, nowhere to go in the run game. Quick snap. Keith Ford flags down. This might cost AM five more. Snap infraction. Number 64, offense. Five yard penalty, second down. These are not the situations you want to put a freshman quarterback in. Ball start here. A redshirt sophomore center that just flinches, creates another negative situation. Going to take this snap with his feet right near his own goal line. Precarious spot for a youngster making his first start in SEC action. Out to the 10 yard line, maybe gets Ford. And you're right. I would think from a play calling perspective, this is where you take no chances. You put the ball in the freezer and you try and buy yourself as much field position as you can for your punt group. Or you expect a three man rush with Aiden coverage and you hit telling Kellen Mond, hey, remember Manziel? Remember what he did? If they rush three, he would buy time and buy time. You already hit Kirk on a 70 yard touchdown. Probably not the spot real estate wise to do that, but someone will be keeping an eye on as a game evolves. Now third and 17. I'm not sure how frisky you get with your play calling here, but here is Mond. Buying time, looking downfield, throws one, and there's the trouble. A true freshman, even given that time, may make a mistake in his half of the field. And Andre Tolliver makes Kellen Mond a Texas AM peg. So you just go to the coach's tape here, just a three-man rush. That's all it is. They're going to run a stunt, but look at all the defenders, eight of them in coverage. And Mom does it, right? He's buying time. He's buying time. But what he's not realizing is the awareness here of the senior who sees all that green grass in front of him and says, and the whole time he's thinking, throw it, throw it, throw it. That's exactly what he does. Those eyes back into the backfield. I showed you earlier with Greenlaw, the linebacker that time, Tolliver, the senior corner. And I'm telling you, man, when you've got underneath coverage, they are just wishing that that quarterback makes that kind of decision so he can make them pay. Well, if you want to pick up 17 yards on third down, this is the type of throw you have to make. So I guess, I hate to say I told you so, yeah. but run the ball, yep. let your punt group go out there and kick it, let your defense go play, to put a true freshman in that type of a situation, trying to get greedy and going for it on third down and 17, well, now you pay the price. So now Arkansas starts at the AM 30-yard line. 
Making a move in the backfield is Chase Hayden. Great jump cut. And he's all the way inside the 15, out of bounds at the 12. It might be a face masking call to tack on a few more. I'll tell you the other thing that I like about Dan Enos and Brett Bielema. When they make a mistake, they'll own it. They'll own it. And they said, you know what, looking back at that TCU game, Chase Hayden, we thought, eh. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number 10 of the defense. Penny's hand gets to the goal line. Automatic first down. You know what, nice to have a 100-yard game against FAMU, but... That's a little different against Gary Patterson, TCU, all the pressure, all the blitz, and you can see the obvious face mask there. And they felt like taking Hayden off the field, just two rushes against the Horn Frogs. Uh, wasn't the best move. You need his kind of elusiveness, his explosion. He's going to bring that to you in the backfield. You're going to see it by committee this season an awful lot by Arkansas. He's still out there. They said that that was not going to be a mistake they would repeat. Chase Hayden would play a big role in today's game. He's the eye back on first and goal. He gets another chance, and he makes it count. That's an Arkansas touchdown. Just good old-fashioned power O once again blocking down and that time actually Gibson at guard. I like that move. Clary's a little bit more athletic but not as stout so you move your guard in to run that power. You get that a movement at the point of attack. Everybody else a hat on a hat and the young freshman paying off his opportunity showing this coaching staff give me the chance I don't care who it is I'm the game breaker. After the senior Andre Tolliver set up the hogs with the interception. Kellen Mond makes the mistake. It is points off turnovers now for Arkansas. Chase Hayden. He was Tennessee Mr. Football as a senior. He was Tennessee Mr. Basketball as a junior and a senior. That's an athlete right there. To you by Goodyear. Game is of adjustments. That's your right tackle, who happens to now be right guard. Why? So you can win at the point of attack. This is the best blocking tight end I've seen in college football yet. You have a bye week. You bring in a new tackle, Paul Ramirez, right here. Right, you bring him off, but this is the block. You win at the point of attack. You do so no longer with a true freshman, Ty Clary. At least on that down a distance that has struggled. You take your bye week. You evaluate what you've got. Put your best people in the best position for success. Moving to tackle the guard, bringing in another tackle. Play to your strengths. It's exactly what the Razorbacks did. Clyde Chris running it out and barely getting across the 10 yard line before he loses his footing. Brock Ewards on his game. Is Adnan Burke on his game? Let's find out. <laughs> Never, Bob. I'm, I'm a work in progress. You know that. NC State and Florida State, though. James Blackman to Auden Tate. So good news there for the freshman quarterback bouncing back. Three point deficit on ESPN2 and ABC. Also, UMass and Tennessee. John Kelly, 12 yard run, sixth rushing touchdown this season, more than he had all last year. It's on the SEC network. Bob? All right, Adnan, thanks very much. Outside of one busted coverage for the Christian Kirk touchdown, yep. it has been a struggle for Texas A&M against this patient Arkansas defense. Kellen Mond on a keeper. He's got a lane, and he's got a step. The freshman in the open field. Breaks a tackle, but he stepped out of bounds. Crowd thinks it's a touchdown, but he is down at the 10 yard line. Josh Liddell saved the score. And it was about 80 yards of real estate he had to cover to track down Kellen Mock. Well, you didn't like it on third and 17. I agree with you, Bob, as you look back at it. Don't make the play on third and 17, but on first down, you have got to use your explosiveness. This Arkansas group, and you see it there at the end, Eugene, he doesn't even account for you. He is diving in to stop that run. The stunner, TJ Smith, who has contained. He doesn't do his job, and that's got to make a freshman feel good. After you throw a pick, and I love the call from Noel Mazzoni as well, offensive coordinator. Did he step out? Put it back in his hands and let him make a play. They're now going to say touchdown? I think they're going to go upstairs and review this one. He was ruled to have stepped out at the 10-yard line. And as he went into the end zone, I clearly saw an official stop at the 10-yard line and blow the play dead. Oh, they did. Yeah, and I think he got the feet confused here as the defender and the quarterback. 
Because Kellen Mond never stepped never, out. No, he didn't. This will be a quick review. <laughs> I think he just lost sight of the feet there. I think he, he believed that defender chasing him down. That was the quarterback, but Mond swings it back into play. Does that feel good? After you throw a critical interception, what do you do? You come back. You know, in this kind of high level of competition, you can't duck away. You're going to have adversity. You know you are. There is no substitute for experience, but to bounce back with an enormous explosive play. Josh Liddell was the player that tried to stay with Kellen Mond as best he could, and he was shaken up. They're still tending to him, and now they'll help Josh Liddell up. But Kellen Mond never stepped out of bounds. Nope. That should be, should be, and should have been a Texas A&M touchdown. Now the problem for Texas A&M, yep. and I'm not sure we're going to get an explanation from the referee on the field or not, but if the whistle was blown, and it was, and the play was ruled dead at the 10-yard line, dead, not something that can be reviewed, and Texas A&M catches a terrible break. Now they have to regather. They have it first and goal at the 10-yard line, but Kellen Mond never stepped out of bounds. That should have been an Aggies touchdown. Keith Ford, driven back after a gain of a half yard by Austin Capps. Wow. I remember that play, Kevin Sumlin is. You, know, you, can't, you can't continue to let that affect you. You're still down here inside the 10. You have got to finish, but that was some human error, some assumptions being made there, and a quarterback that made an incredibly athletic play to stay in bounds. Down at the 10 yard line again. Dwayne Eugene brings down Kellen Mann. Now it will be third and goal at the 10. I don't like the other end of the field. Can't be greedy here. Third and 10. If they're going to drop into coverage, there are not many lanes unless you throw with anticipation early. But you better be very secure if you're scrambling around as this field condenses as well. Man rush. And they will drop eight into coverage and try and limit the windows for Kellen Ma. He's extending the play. Flag down. Back of the end zone. Dropped. Jamon Osborne couldn't hold on. A low throw. But this will be holding against Texas A&M nonetheless. So it wouldn't have counted even if Osborne had held on. Telvin again put the pressure on, and that was the player that forced the holding call. You know, on Sutherland, that's the challenge of a scrambling quarterback. Those tackles get out on the edge as well. Very difficult. It's an athletic game there. That's a three-man rush, man. That is yeoman's work to affect the quarterback. It's a bitter pill for Texas yep. A&M. 27-yard attempt that should give them three. Daniel LaCamera is able to put it through. They settled for three, but they should have had seven. It's human error, man. They're, they're not robots. And unfortunately, at times, they're going to make assumptions as two as guys are flying by them. But Mon clearly never steps out of bound. The whistle is blown, and it's a blown call early. There are more than a few folks calling for an upset on the SEC Network tonight, thinking that Kentucky yeah. can pull off a win. I mean, it's amazing. It's been decades and decades and decades. But some of my NFL friends have said that Kentucky group, much more athletic than they've ever been, and especially their young people who they are recruiting and developing. And Florida's still got quarterback issues. It was one heck of a play to finish a game with so much inconsistency on that side of the ball. That's Brock Ewer. I'm Bob Wischusen. Allison Williams down on the field. And Ed Nedvert back in the studio.
Bob, as a Knicks fan, you are going to be locked into this news. You had me at Mello. Carmelo Anthony is leaving New York City to go to Oklahoma City. This, according to our man, Agent Wojnarowski. In return, the Knicks get Enos Cantor, Doug McDermott, and a 2018 second-round pick. Major news from the NBA as the Mello era over in the Big Apple. Bob? Well, it's a move they had to make. That needs to now be Christoph Porzingis' team, yep. Frank Nilakina's team, Hernan Gomez's team. You have a young core of players, and frankly, Carmelo Anthony was a stack compiling, losing player in New York. You needed to move on from that, and that's a good job by the Knicks to finally get that done. Having him expand his list of teams to which he was willing to waive his no trade, and now he has a chance to go compete for a championship. Flags down before the snap here. All start. 76 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. It's a big boy. Paul Ramirez talked about the move that they have made, moving the right tackle Johnny Gibson into guard, bringing Paul Ramirez, the senior. He was a highly recruited kid, bringing him in to play right tackle. Just some of the opportunities and moves that you have in a bye week as you evaluate. You put everything on the table. Is this a spot now where John Chavis backs off a little bit, pulls in Arkansas, yes. and plays coverage first and 15? Or does he keep bringing heat? No, absolutely on early downs. Sound. Devois Whaley. Flag down. Penalty marker thrown in the tackle box. Will Arkansas back up even further? Otaro Alaka made the tackle. Holding. 76 offense. Plays the distance to go on first down. That's Ramirez with a false start. That's Ramirez with a two-point takedown. That's now 15 yards penalties, or at least it's half the distance and saves him a little bit. You can see Johnny Gibson now. Relax. Relax. You're getting a chance here, right? Clary, the true freshman, started the first couple games, played some. Had some of his challenges, at least physically. Trying to solidify that right side of the offensive line will be a huge conversation throughout the season in Fayetteville. Four-man rush. Austin Allen dumps it off underneath to Jonathan Nance. He breaks a tackle and picks up about 10 yards. So now it's second down and 14, but manageable. You've called Jets games how long? Uh, 17 years this year. 17 years. You saw a true freshman on the other side, albeit it was third down and 20, who just, you know, flinched a little bit, made a freshman mistake. There you see a senior quarterback that has started for a couple years. And what does he do on first and 25? Try to get everything back? No. Nope. Take the check down and maybe three yards, but if he breaks a tackle, you know what? Maybe 11 yards. And that is the value that comes with a redshirt senior in the experience for Brett Bielema. for Allen again. They set the screen up against an aggressive AM defense, and they've got a first down. Cheyenne O'Grady, a tight end screen. The senior Austin Allen maintains his composure. A big game. I haven't seen everybody yet in college football. We'll see next week at Wisconsin. They've got some good tight ends, but as a crew, I don't know if we're going to see a better group of tight ends than this one. And when Bielema came to Fayetteville, it was fullbacks, it was tight ends, it was pro style. And it was offensive line, and, and the last one has not grown to the extent that many would like, but this right, this tight end room is as good as any in the country. And now the Wildcat snap to the true freshman, Chase Hayden. And he dives forward for four. And that call just looms so large in a game like this, right? That missed touchdown call on Mons. Because you know what Enos wants to do and Bielema wants to do. They want to shorten this game. They want to minimize possessions and overall snaps. That Mon touchdown comes off the board. They have to settle for three. And chewing up that clock is what the Razorbacks have done better than anybody in college football the last couple seasons. Allen has all day. Now, finally, after holding on to the ball for a long time, Ends up sacked by Jarek Johnson. That's a really good job by the front. You call that slide protection. The entire line slides to your right like a dance move. And you've got a running back that is left, and his job is to go down and try to chop. And try to chop at the feet there of Jarek Johnson. 
Doesn't quite get enough of him, but that's on the quarterback. That is what you call on your grade sheet a quarterback sack. When that running back's going to dive, that is a quick three-step drop. Get the ball out. Get the ball out. Just praise that experience for checking it down on first and 25. Texas A&M. The senior. Texas A&M needs to stop. Arkansas starts the third quarter with the football. Designed rollout for Allen. Under pressure. Down he goes again. Great coverage downfield by the Aggies. Allows Tyrell Dodson. Another sack for the Aggies. That's their fourth here in the first half. You know what? Calls even themselves out during the course of a game. Look at this, Bob. This is a little wheel route. And watch my friend right here. And watch what he does on this wheel route. That's Priest Willis. Look at that tug. He tugs. He grabs. He holds. I'm not saying that is a makeup call on that sideline, but that could have very easily on a little wheel rub route right there Very easily be called been called on priest Willis as he grabs and holds the receiver Jonathan Nance not allowing him to run Blake Johnson kicks it towards Kirk and this one takes a dangerous hop down the sideline The referee on that sideline the official throws his hat. It may have been illegally touched We'll see you when we come back. Field position in 60 seconds. Back to Arlington. Sections. AM, they have made their way from College Station to Arlington. The Yell leaders getting them going. And now let's see before halftime if Kellen Mond can once again respond down by 11. Play action on first down. He wants the deep ball. Man for man coverage under thrown a bit. Great adjustment by Damian Ratley, and he pulls it in from Cameron Curl. And that's one of the age advantages you have. That is the junior college transfer, the senior Ratley, and he is matched up on the true freshman Curl. They call that a 50-50 ball, and he wins. NASCAR tempo for the Aggies. And Travion Williams picks up three and a half. Big time for Ratley. That's just a jump ball. Just a one-on-one -on -one situation there where you're putting a true freshman corner out in space. You may be conservative, but you still got to win your coverage. And that time the freshman couldn't. Wide receiver screen. Kirk. Tries to power his way for a first down. Let's see where forward progress gets him to. It looks like he will be about a yard shot. So that'll bring up third down and one for Texas A&M. I think that could be there 10 times today. If you're patient enough just to throw the little bubble screen to Kirk, I mean, that they are going to give you those opportunities. It's like a running play in their offense, isn't it? That's exactly right. To your most dynamic guy out on the perimeter. Travion Williams has the first down. Now, if you're Texas A&M, knowing Arkansas starts the third quarter with the football, do you want to go up-tempo here, or do you want to try and use the play clock and see if maybe it takes you the maximum amount of time to score? Is this a clock management situation with a true freshman? I think back? it's about a rhythm and trust experience more than anything else. Well, they run it again with Williams. But maybe if you had a veteran guy, Bob, I think that enters into your mind. You know, you two also have got three timeouts. And the way that they like to play, and Noel and Kevin through the years, go score. And we got three timeouts, and we may utilize those defensively and get the ball back again to score. More than anything, get something the quarterback feels comfortable in, where the offense gains some rhythm. Early down success, even if it's three or four yards, is a win. Travion Williams up the middle. No one home for Arkansas. That's a Texas A&M touchdown. And Bielema says, that's my power play. What are you doing running my power on that side? Now, you may do it out of empty, but watch the big right tackle. Keaton Sutherland, he drives down the best defender again. That allows the other pullers to come. It's power football. It's just down with four receivers spread out all over the field. And Williams, no more dancing around. Going north and south. A six-play, 82-yard touchdown drive took just over 
two minutes off the clock. And Texas A&M back within four as we go back to Adnan. This will take less than two minutes, I promise you, Bob. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, and me as you break down the NC State Wolfpack against the Florida State Seminoles. That's right. Just moments ago, Ryan Finley to Jacoby Myers, a 71-yard touchdown. What is going on with the Seminoles' offense? Nice flip, too, as well. Bob, back to you. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. Well, when DeAndre Francois went down with a season-ending injury, Brock, you talked about it that weekend, so that's going to be huge trouble for that Seminoles team, and they are experiencing exactly wow. that. Here's a Texas A&M team, remember. They lost their starting quarterback. Nick Starkel, redshirt freshman, broke his leg in the opener against UCLA. Jake Hubenak, I guess the senior, was thought to be the clear-cut number two. Kind of in a battle with Kellen Mond, but he suffered a shoulder injury, so they turned it over to Kellen Mond most likely for the rest of the season as a true freshman, and he is a battler. Hesitation for Devion Warren. Brings it out. Turns out to be a good decision. Warren finally brought down to the 38-yard line. Normally, you see a return man hesitate like that you're thinking this is yep. a mistake. Well, it turned out to be a great call. He has got some quickness, and sometimes you hesitate. <laughs> you say, all right, it's coming out then. 100 miles an hour, broken tackle, broken tackle, cutting back across the field. And what this really does now with a couple timeouts is this sets you up. Right? This is your opportunity with all three timeouts, in fact, to know you get the ball to begin the second half. And this is where you got to earn it, man. This, this is where you can really change that scoreboard in significant ways. Manage, run out the rest of the clock. If you're Arkansas, hope to score and then get it to begin the second half. Guys, you'll see here Arkansas going back with the original starting five on that offensive line. Right guard Ty Clary back in trying to find the best combination there. There's been some frustration with the play on the right side. Austin Allen telling them, I need you guys. Well, this time they provide him just enough protection for a swing pass to Jordan Jones. But that was slow developing, and Armani Watts had plenty of time to come up and drop Jones for a one-yard loss. If it comes down to Connor Limpert kicking a field goal at the end of this drive, it will be his first attempt at a field goal. Remember, Cole Headland missed twice from inside of 25 yards last week, and that led Brent Bielema to say, we're done with that. We are moving on from Cole Headland. They had a two-week competition between Blake Mazza, a true freshman, Connor Limpert, a sophomore. Limpert won the competition. And he will be the kicker. See if he gets put in a pressure situation. Hand off, and then there's room. David Williams makes it third down and manageable. Third and about six, cut down by Larry Pryor. Does either coach want to take a time out here? You're right in that gray area. If you're AM with all three, do you dare take one, put the ball back in your hands, hit another explosive play? You've had three plays offensively over 50 yards today. Someone will not. Either will Bielema get the ball to begin the second half. But if I'm Brett here, I hustle up. I got a good field position. Brett Bielema's playing this as if they just want to go to the locker room knowing they're starting the third quarter with the ball and a four-point lead. They're in the huddle with 10 on the play clock. They may have to call a timeout just to get this snap off. Play clock down to three. And now Brett Bielema will call the timeout from the sideline with 16 seconds to go before halftime. It's a week three Monday night football matchup. We're here at Cowboys Stadium, AT&T Stadium to be exact. And the Cowboys, they're taking on the Cardinals in the desert. Carson Palmer and the Cardinals take on Dak Prescott and the Cowboys on Monday night football. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern on ESPN. That game also available on ESPN2 in Spanish and it has been a struggle for these two quarterbacks to start off the year to say the least I think for different reasons for Carson he's got a defense but he lost his running back and for Dak it is always more difficult year two the entire league studies you the entire offseason when you are the guy versus the one coming in very different situation well it was also a magic carpet ride last year before anyone was even talking about there being pressure on Dak Prescott yep. Cowboys were seven and one last season all of a sudden teams now start to say if you're the Broncos I'm gonna load up and stop the run Ezekiel Elliott's not beating me 
can Dak Prescott, as he is put in those situations going forward, be the kind of quarterback that can beat you? Yep. We'll find out. Conservative with the clock here for Arkansas, third down and five. That's my guy right here. That is Cornelius, and you can see the double team in the top of the field. Screen. Cornelius can't hold on. 12 seconds to go. Down to 11 seconds to go in the first half. It's fourth down. It'll be a punt for the Razorbacks, and that should just about end the half. Just about the way I think many thought this game would look like coming in. I think Paul Rhodes will be most disappointed in Brett Bielema defensively. Just the explosive play. 50, 79, 81. I mean, just huge chunk plays that have given AM so much of their momentum and points. It's still a work in progress at the line of scrimmage for Arkansas to get, as Allison said, that right combination. Blake Johnson does not want to return for Christian Kirk, and it will be a fair catch for Kirk with five seconds to go in the half. So. You would think this would be victory formation for the Aggies as they will most likely I would think just take a knee and head to the locker room down by four. What do you say tough kid is that what you said earlier about Mons? He's got Moxie. You go three of 17 in your first time out against UCLA and you're part of one of the largest collapse college football scene and to get back on campus that next day and to go back into the office that that's that is not easy for a true freshman. So to show, I think, first and foremost, the guts and resolve off of that loss to come back and say, I'm good. Uh, that speaks volumes to me. And if this game ends with an Arkansas four-point win, well, what's the play that all the Aggie fans and Kellen Mond are going to look back to when he did not step out of bounds, was ruled to have stepped out of bounds, and they had to settle for a field goal from the 10-yard line rather than having what they deserved, which was a touchdown. And the half ends on this weaving run by Travion Williams. Four point lead for Arkansas. At the end of the first half, they'll have the football to start the third quarter. Time for the halftime report. Back to Adnan Burke. This is the SEC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the third quarter. Arkansas will have the football and a four point lead, 21 17. Over Texas A&M, Bob Wachus and Brock Hewitt, Allison Williams here in Arlington at AT&T Stadium. And of course, Texas A&M having to shake off the fact that they missed out on a touchdown run by Kellen Mond when he was incorrectly ruled out at the 10-yard line. Cost them four points, and they are down, down by four. Warren from the end zone brings it out and gets bottled up at about the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. Brock, how hard is it for a team to rebound from something like that? And what have you seen from Texas A&M? Yeah, it's easier when you're young. You know, this is a senior-laden team. You may dwell on it and think about it. These guys, these freshmen are just trying to get lined up <laughs> and make the right decisions. I think it is flushed. It is over. The coaches remember, and I guarantee you the fans will as well. I'll tell you what stands out as much as anything in a game with some tremendous urgency. Arkansas made their adjustments during the bye week. They got to the personnel to put them in the best place for success. And A&M is going to show you if they're going to win this game, it's going to be the big place. Four sacks defensively, some huge chunk plays offensively. Looking forward to the next 30 minutes of this one. And during bowl season, when teams have a long time to prepare, we talk about the fact that the coaches like to get in the laboratory and play mad scientist and come out with some wrinkles. Well, the Razorbacks have certainly come out with some different looks today. Straight drop back for Austin Allen to begin this drive. And a check down to Austin Cantrell. A terrific blocking tight end. He makes his third catch of the season here for a gain of eight. And now we have an injured player. Is that Jared Cornelius that's down? It is. He had a back injury that cost him a fair amount of the preseason and a very slow start to the regular season, but they loved how healthy he was and how he was able to get back in shape during the bye week. He said he lost between 10 and 15 pounds since the TCU game and looks like his old self. And now he's down. Yeah, this is no contact. And you could see that back heel slip out and immediately he reaches for Achilles there. And he is not going to be able to put any weight on that left foot. That's a big loss for the Razorbacks. Their most experienced receiver. He's the only receiver on their roster coming into the season that had more than two catches 
at the FBS level. So it's a very inexperienced group surrounding Jared Cornelius. And that does not look like a player that's coming back anytime soon. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, I'll get you more on Cornelius as soon as I can. I want to update you, though, on my conversation with Kevin Sumlin at the half. I talked to him about the incorrect call that cost them that touchdown on the Kellen Mond run. And he said it was really frustrating and confusing for him because it is an unreviewable play that they had to just stick with that play. He just really tried to keep his guys focused on moving forward. He thought they did some really good things in the second quarter. He said if we can continue to do those in the second half, we'll be in good shape. They just really needed to settle down, though. I think he made the point too, Brock. Penalties, yep. much more so than in any other game they played this season. Penalties definitely hurt the Aggies in the first. Well, half. and you're looking at two teams here that don't get penalized and, and beat them for years and years and years. Again, in this system to shorten the game and to run the ball, you cannot be penalized. They two in that first half, uncharacteristic for both sides. Five penalties in the first half for A&M, four for the Razorbacks. Another handoff to David Williams. Tripped up, flagged down. Holding 18 offense 10 yard penalty first down Jeremy Patton the tight end called for a holding foul so that another penalty against Arkansas and when you lose Jared Cornelius you lose almost all of your career production at the wide receiver spot yeah you talk about the young pups on the other side and 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 does Arkansas lost everybody in the receiving core everybody that was trustworthy other than Cornelius from a season ago the top four receivers that's tough duty for a senior quarterback. That's why they spend an awful lot of their bye week working with Cornelius, getting his weight down, getting that relationship back in place. And now whether it is Nance or others, Austin Allen's got to make a new buddy. So the odd yardage of first and 17, the spot foul on Jeremy Patton. Play action for Austin Allen. Steps up, keeps his balance, and scrambles forward for about three yards. Landis Durham tripped him up. You know, it's been the same thing really on both sides, Bob, as you look at it. That's now five penalties each. And they're penalties that just set you back. Two teams that need to stay on schedule. And for AM, it's a young quarterback. And for Arkansas, it's a lack of lack of explosion. Right? Of other people outside of Cornelius. So when you get a false start or a holding call or something that just sets you back behind the chains, much more difficult for this quarterback because of the pieces around him and the comfort level that's still trying to grow in them. Play action fake once again for Allen. Long throw to the sideline, incomplete. Intended for Deion Stewart. Now it will be third down and 14. And that's kind of case in point right there. That's what you want. That's a little what they call a bear front from a and They love to shift into that. You know what it is, the quarterback's man to man. And I just got to get my guys to win. Couldn't do it a week ago, two weeks ago against TCU. Couldn't separate very well. Very little there. Good coverage from AM on the back end. Screens and draws here on third and 14. Good screen team. And it looks like, and look at the conservative defense. Five on the play clock. Five Aggies, 15 yards deep. But they bring six. Allen has to unload. Was he inside the tackle box? And I'm not sure that ball got well past the line of scrimmage. Kingsley Kiki. Put out for intentional grounding. The pass was out of the pocket on the forward pass across the line of scrimmage. So they will say he was outside of the tackle box as Kiki was all over Austin Allen. And you can see a little frustration there from Allen. Good little pressure there. Good nickel pressure coming off the edge, showing him a conservative look. Like he is outside the tackle box, and with it, if it's within a yard, they're going to give you a little grace period to get it back to the line of scrimmage. That's a good. That's a good stop there. That is a good three and out from Texas A&M defensively. You know that's what was preached at halftime. Blake Johnson. Pretty good kick. Fair catch for Kirk. Inside his own 30-yard line at the A&M 29. A 44-yard punt. We'll continue to keep our eyes on Jared Cornelius. He's still inside the Arkansas 10. Arkansas defense prided themselves on not giving up the big play, but it was AM all over it. It was Christian Kirk early on the broken coverage there. It was Kellamon saying, after an interception, enough is enough. I'm going to take this game over. I'm going to do it with my athleticism in the legs. 
And then just a one on one ball near the end of the first half to Ratley, the senior receiver over the true freshman corner. And Williams pays it off. Three plays over 50 yards against a defense who structurally is doing everything to keep it in front of them. And you see Cornelius, Jared Cornelius, the senior receiver, carted off the field for Arkansas. Kellen Mond has all day, only a three man rush. And this time he is able to hook up with Jamon Osmond for a gain of 14 and an AM first down. Allison? Well, Jared Cornelius was taken into the locker room as they evaluate a left ankle injury. I will tell you guys, though, when he was helped to the cart, he could not put any weight on that ankle. And just the fact with a flag down that he had to be carted off tells you all you need to know about how much pain he must have been in. Travion Williams ends up buried by Dijon Harris. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face, number 52 defense. 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. That's a big one on T.J. Smith. That's down number six here for Arkansas defensively. You come off of a bye week. You've been very physical. The pads have been on for a couple weeks. You're anxious to go out and hit somebody else. But that's T.J. getting the hands. I don't know what Brett's yelling at. T.J. gets his hands right up into the face mask. And once that offensive lineman's head he yanks back, you're going to get that penalty. So just like that, to the 41 yard line plus territory for AM. Little cut back at the line for Travion Williams. There's Dijon Harris making another tackle, but not until Williams picked up four. And that's the game, man. Are you going to take four? Are you going to take a bubble screen? Are you going to avoid the pre snap penalties? I mean, those yards are there on nearly every first down in this game. And second down, too, if they're going to continue to play these three guys and rely on those three to ugly it up against the other five, going to be opportunities on early down yardage, but conservative. Throwing it to the sideline, and it would have been better for Christian Kirk if he would have dropped that football. He actually cost his team three yards by making the catch. Unless they said he was out of bounds and it's an incompletion. Looked like he caught it and got a foot down. Let's see where the officials spot the football. Well, they're going to say incomplete, so now it is third down and a more manageable six yards to go. And now you're starting to get in a little bit of that no man's land as far as four downs and what you want to do as far as what you want to do if you're Paul Rhodes defensively against the freshman quarterback. And he's going to put four down and he's going to give him a pre snap little pressure look with man to man coverage. Only one deep safety. Nice fake by Mond, but he is buried after picking up about three yards to the 35 yard line by Dre Greenlaw. So now a decision. Do you go for it on fourth down and four at the plus 35? Yeah, I think that answer is yes from the sidelines. What a nice little tackle there. We've seen this a number of times. That's why those big guys up front keep it clean for Greenlaw to scrape and to run sideline to sideline and finish. Fourth down and four. Man to man. Hard count from Mons. Now the look over. Play clock down to four. Down to two. He might not get the play off unless Kevin Sumlin calls timeout. He tries to as a flag comes out. First charge timeout of the half. Texas A&M. The official to our left dropped a delay of game flag. So if Kevin Sumlin got that timeout, it was at the last possible moment. We're coming right back to Arlington. It is a great rivalry game. The Southwest Classic is what they have dubbed it as it harkens back to the old Southwest Conference days when Arkansas and Texas A&M were conference rivals. Now they're conference rivals once again in the SEC. Big play here after the timeout, fourth down and four. That's my guy, Christian Kirk, if I can get him into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Kellen Mond looks that way on the slant, perfectly thrown. And that is true freshman to true freshman. Jamon Osmond picks up the first down. He sure does. And Kirk does his job to clear that play out right in front and allow that little underneath route to come. You got to win. You got to win right there. And once you win and get inside, you give your quarterback an opportunity to put it in any spot. And that's a good throw down in the way, not giving the DB, the freshman curl, any chance to come over. That's excellent by the true freshman Osmond.
About two yards on first down. Under 10 minutes to go in the third. Travion Williams, the ball carrier. And I know how precious second half timeouts are. And you would expect this would be a game that would go down to the wire. I'm sure it hurt to take that timeout if you were Kevin Sumlin. But before fourth down and four, that was one that was probably worth taking. Get to the right call. Inside the 25-yard line getting stood up as another true freshman, Rashad Paul. About three yards. And here we are again, because you stayed on schedule. You're right here at third and four, third and five. And that's a down and distance that Brett Bielema is willing to live with. Do not want to give up any more of those huge chunk explosive plays. Why he elevated Paul Rhodes to defensive coordinator. Asking his guys to be relentless in their pursuit here. On the third and seven, and whether you're going to play some of that man to man that you're doing a little more of here to begin the second half, excuse me, third and five. Now, partner, you were right the first time. They got down to about the 23 yard line, so third down and five it is. Right up the gut, breaking free, Keith Ford at the pylon. Is he in? Yes, he is. That is an AM touchdown. plays 71 yards capped by Keith for the Oklahoma transfer set out 2015 when he arrived in College Station last season ran for just shy of 700 yards and he is a great compliment power back to Travion Williams and it'll be Texas A&M now by a field goal Arkansas gets caught just a little bit. They're running a line stunt. They're thinking pass on third and five. Instead, it's a run. Credit Noel Mazzone and his big back for finishing the touchdown. Outside of what amounted to a kneel down before halftime, the last three drives for Texas A&M have been touchdown, field goal, touchdown. And they have taken their first lead, 24-21. Brock, how'd they do it? The minute you stop wanting to learn, get out of the game. I learned something yesterday, and it's the way that these coaches at Arkansas are graded. You're going to see Arkansas run a line stunt, and you're going to ask a redshirt freshman here, D-tackle, and that's Jonathan Marshall here to stunt. And he runs in that stunt right out of the play. There is very little you can do. Brett Bielema has said, I judge my coaches on structure of play and play call and execution. And I think that time they expected pass. And you run that line stunt if you're Paul Rhodes expecting pass. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, Marshall couldn't have felt that. It doesn't mean that Greenlaw linebacker couldn't have helped scrape a little bit. But structurally, you put your kids in a position to stunt and blitz and run yourself right out of that lane that AM took advantage of. Now, how does Arkansas? without Jared Cornelius respond. they will go back to the ground and Chase Hayden. And he will not pick up anything on first down. Jared Johnson has had a good game so far on that A&M front with another tackle. That was all about effort and want to. Four sacks in that first half for Texas A&M. Johnson got one of those, couple now on the season, and he just beats the block. Jeremy Patton, the junior college tight end, already called for a hold. You get called for one. You certainly don't want to get called for another little hesitant. Johnson took advantage. Wildcat. Hayden lines up to take the direct snap. And that's TJ Hammonds in motion. Hayden spinning out across the 30. About two yards shy of the first down. So a gain of eight brings up a big third down. Sure does. And if Cornelius is your explosion guy and he is out of the game, where else can you find it? Number two on this roster, and it doesn't matter that he's been here three weeks. It's true freshman Hayden. So I think you'll see him over the next 23 minutes. Well, now they're going back to the big quarterback. That's a big running back we'll see tonight at Kinnick Stadium. Saquon Barkley at Penn State taking on Iowa in our primetime game tonight. Cole Kelly, 6'7", 268, back in at quarterback. Pressure, bear front, man to man. Here it comes, big fella. They can't stop him. 
Just a straight ahead dive by a big running quarterback behind a lead blocker in David Williams. And look at right now, the All-American center right in the middle of your screen here, man. That guy is an animal. That guy doesn't just look to block, he looks to finish. What did Bielema tell us yesterday? He said of all of the players he's ever been around, he has never been around a guy that was more of a layup to say, from the time I saw him, you're going to play 10 or 12 years in the NFL. There's just no doubt about He's it. He's the best lineman we've seen. The NFL needs a lot more Frank Regnaus. I think Mel Kuyper has him as the second best center on his big board right now. Allen back in, back to throw, under pressure, and he goes down. Sacked again by guess who? Check that. Landis Durham gets to the backfield. That's his second sack of the game. That's Paul Ramirez. That's a senior, right? They, they mix this up line a little bit. Move Gibson in. He's been the tackle. Ramirez a false start. Ramirez a hold. That time Ramirez just not getting off the ball. And Allen's like, come on, man. First down pass play. You've got to at least give me the opportunity to get the ball out of my hand. If you don't, you set us back way behind these chains. Hard for us to execute. Draw play. Chase Hayden. Flag down. And he is thrown down after a gain of two. That's going to be Gibson, the right guard, right? Shift from right tackle to right guard. And it is amazing. Right? Whenever you bring an extra somebody in the game of baseball, in the late inning sub, what happens? The ball always finds them. You make some moves, you change some things around on your O line. Holding. 62 offense. Kelly's decline. There's only place third down. Exactly what Kevin Sumlin did was what I was going to ask you should he do? Would yep. you take the down? Or would you take the penalty? They had a choice between second down and about 23 if they take the penalty or third down and 11. He took the down. Yeah. Now his defense needs to make that decision stand up. Yep. And as much pressure as you've got on with a four man rush and beating these tight ends and beating Gibson and beating Ramirez, I think this is where you got to trust your rush to get it done. Four-man rush. Blitz coming off the edge. Allen in trouble again. Able to dump it off, but short of the first down, and Cheyenne O'Grady couldn't hold on. So with 5.43 to go in the third, AM with the lead, about to get the football back. You know, the numbers lead you to a conversation and say, what's wrong with Austin Allen? What's going on with him? Talking to folks in Arkansas yesterday. Ah, he's just not... Well, you tell me what you want to do. The previous play, I can't finish my drop. I'm getting hit in my right ear hole. I got a bloody nose earlier in this game. That time, my left tackle, Colton Jackson, beat clean inside. Right now, you got to contain yourself, and Dan Enos is going to tell him that. There's nothing good that comes out of O-linemen that are getting hammered and beat up if the quarterback does it as well. Save that to the O-line coach and the head coach. Fourth straight punt, though, for Arkansas. Blake Johnson, wobbly kick, but a good one. Christian Kirk, fair catch again at his own 25-yard line, a 40-yard kick. Austin Allen, though, frustrated on the sideline. Kick off your Week 3 NFL Sunday. It's Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN. We'll bring it to you at 10 a.m. with Rex Ryan, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselback, Randy Moss, Mort Shefty, the new host, Samantha Ponder. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates. They'll preview each game, take you right up until kickoff. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. A lot of big fellas have got to get it right. No surprise to see Bielema in there. I mean, they, they have got to fix that. You cannot play systematically what you want to do unless those five win their one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one opportunities. Keeper for Kellen Mond, and he goes down behind the line. Tackle for loss from T.J. Smith, although the point that you made, Brock, is a great one, and that is when your senior quarterback, Austin Allen, comes to the sideline, it still has to be all about confidence for him. You're without Jared Cornelius. Yep. You've got a lot of young wide receivers. If they're all looking at the senior quarterback who's losing it on the sideline, they're all going to look at each other and I think start to wonder. That's right, tighten up. But if he comes over and gives them all a pat on the back and says, guys, we're going to go get it, and they make it a chance. As it's going to be third down and 10. Kendall Bussey brought down by Randy Ramsey after a gain of two. Well, this is a big call, man. This is a big call in a little chess match that I have, I have had a blast watching between Noel Mazzoni, the veteran offensive coordinator for AM, and Paul Rhodes, the veteran defensive coach. When a line's done on the previous third down, you open up a gap. You've seen three men rush. You've seen a little bit more man and pressure. This is where these guys make their awfully nice salaries.
Four man front for the Hawks. And they will rush for it. Ellen Mons buying time in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He's going to have to get rid of it across his body, and he just could not reach Jamon Osborne running out near midfield, and he got walloped by McTelvin again. That was a good shot. That, that's what Paul Rhodes wants. Effort, relentlessness, continue to pursue. When you've got an athletic quarterback, no surprise, it's a game, man. That kid plays hard from beginning to end. And Christian Kirk was only triple teamed on that play, by the way. If you're, if you're wondering where he was, he was not going to get that third down conversion. Andre Tolliver with flags down, back to receive the punt in place of Jared Cornelius. Ball start, 24, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Check this out. Watch Christian Kirk and look at the attention of everybody on this field for where he is at. You are not going to beat us. I'm going to have you triple cover. There is no way, Mr. Mond, you're going to have to find somebody else. That's the sixth Texas A&M penalty. Backs them up a bit more. That might be the best punt of the day, though, from Shane Trapuca. Forces a fair catch from Tolliver inside his own 30-yard line. Well, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is a week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Point for Teachers platform. Visit the College Football Playoff Foundation website at cfp-foundation.org to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week and see how you can get involved. It's a great program, and you can help out a school in your area if you just get involved. Favorite teacher growing up? Most impactful? Can you single out one? Probably my high school Spanish teacher, Bruce Zemler, huh. or Senor. <laughs> That's all he was known by. And around for Jordan Jones. He's into the secondary. Hurdles a man out to midfield. Well, there's one of your youngsters, you said, that would be looking at the quarterback. And that's Jordan Jones, just a redshirt freshman here. And no surprise, don't play within the pocket. The pocket right now is a mess to deal with. Get out on the edges. Run a little bit of wild card, wildcat. Get some of your screen game, some of that conventional football that you love to play, especially in your passing game. I don't think you're going to see it. You're going to see some movement. You're going to see some edge runs, plays just like that. They line up to play power football here, and they'll give it to Devois Whaley. And he powers his way for three yards across the 50-yard line. Larry Pryor came up to make the tackle. He had nine stops last week against Louisiana, career high, and he has been involved today. You don't have to be a sitting duck. It's the beauty of playing offensive football. Defense, you react quite a bit. Yeah, you can run your blitzes and everything else, but offensively, you don't have to just sit and play in five-step drops. There's no mandate for that. You know, and as much as you want to do that, your offensive line can't right now, so this is a time to be creative, to mix tempo, to move that pocket. To keep it on the ground, breaking a tackle and getting loose. Whaley inside the 30-yard line, all the way down to the A&M 27. That's 21 more. Could have been a hold here. Arkansas gets away with it just a little bit. Johnny Gibson, the right guard, gets overextended. Maybe a little bit of grace for that offensive line who's had holding calls and false starts and everything else. But get back to who you are, man. Get back to running the ball. If you're going to slow down that rush, and you can see that AM defense haven't really played anybody committed to the run coming into this one, and they're going to get it for the next 17 minutes. Back to Cole Kelly at quarterback. He's going to throw. He's looking downtown, dumps it off into the right flat. He was trying to reach a receiver that the officials will say was in the area. In Williams, Jared Johnson was all over him. Tyrell Dotson as well. Touchdown. This is a missed touchdown right here, and you're going to see the play action. And I don't know what the big man's looking at other than things just sped up on him. That's that's your read. I mean, that's that's your read right here. There's nobody around. That's that's your read. <laughs> And you know what? Sometimes a young quarterback, no matter how big you are, and even if you've taken some shots earlier, you missed your go-to shot right there. That was a touchdown. David Williams back in as the lone setback. 
Play action, though, for Austin Allen. Wide open is Williams. No one around him. Trying for the pylon. Is he there? Hit at the one-yard line. And out of bounds, just shy of the goal line. Well, the senior quarterback didn't miss David Williams. Wide open in the flat. First and goal for Arkansas inside the one. No, he didn't, but a and missed covering him. I have no idea how you get that far out of your structure defensively. Lost in space. Williams into the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Razorbacks. And they retake the lead. That's four for four. We asked Brett yesterday, what are you going to do inside that five-yard line where your numbers have not been anywhere near what they were at Wisconsin? Four opportunities in the red zone today, four touchdowns. And you don't see any screaming and yelling now, do you, from Austin? How about the play-calling mix as well for Pretty the good. Ninos? How about the message from Bielema, too, to that O-line group to get it together? Let's head back to Abner. Is not the tussle I'm sure Tennessee fans expected to have. At home to the Minutemen. But this is basically the exact game, Brock, I think we expected. Brock Heward, Bob Shoes, and Allison Williams here in Arlington. A response from Austin Allen and that Hogs offense, and they retake the lead. And it's such a fine line you walk as a quarterback, especially as a redshirt senior. How much do you want to get on your guys? And how much do you push and challenge those guys versus, you know what, allowing your coaches to do some of that? Your voice has got to be heard, and it was. But the bigger bark is going to come from the big man. It's going to come from Brett Bielema. And it's going to come from Dan Enos, your offensive coordinator, who was in his ear saying, hey, man, there's a lot of football to play. A lot of football to play. And trust that I will protect you a little bit better. I'll do it through some play calls. I'll do it through moving the pocket. I'll do it through, you know, getting some of our other wrinkles that we have worked on settling in. It's exactly what Arkansas did on that drive. Christian Kirk. From the 10. Out to about the 25. We talked about our extra yard for teachers week. Well, Austin Allen, his brother Brandon, they had a very special kindergarten teacher named Thelma Thompson. And Austin went back to help her celebrate her 80th birthday. She just kind of was the first one to really get us on the path to education, where education matters, you know, where, you know, she got us into reading, got us into all the things that, you know, you need. And um, I would say just really how much she means to our family, how much she means to that school, and um, how many kids she's brought through over her years teaching there. 80 years old, awesome. the kindergarten teacher at Vandergriff Elementary back in Fayetteville, Thelma Thomason. She's heard some things out of the lips of kindergartners <laughs> for a long time. Play action for Kellen Mond. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage going deep, and I'm not sure that Damian Ratley knew that football was coming. Took him a long time to turn his head. Cameron Curl, a true freshman, was there in coverage. A missed shot from Kellen Mott. Yeah, just flat. I think that's part of the reason. You know, that was the same matchup, a 50-50 ball you hit there at the end of the second quarter. At that time, that ball thrown flat. Receiver can't pick it up, can't then adjust and go up and make a play for you. Now they get the ball in the hands of Christian Kirk on a jet sweep. He's got a first down. Well, if you're going to triple team him downfield, I guess you have to come up with some inventive ways to get your best player the ball, and they just did. And I've got to get it to him at least five times here as we push into the fourth quarter. That, that, that is there. That is there time and again, either through that play. Look at the, the, the bottom of the screen right now. Just throw it to him. Instead, hammering his way up the middle was Keith Ford. And that should take us down inside of a minute to go in the third quarter of what has been a terrific game. And this fourth quarter is where it's been the last four years. Sumlin, Bielema, and has won the last five. But the last four, these two have matched up. Arkansas has had two touchdown leads. They've had eight-point leads with three minutes to go. And it's been A&M who've been the ones to finish when it mattered. Keith Ford. First down. Pick your poison, right? I mean, pick your poison here a little bit defensively. You want to give up four and five? 
and try to limit and you have a little better here in the second half. You don't see the 50 plus plays. You don't see the huge explosion plays other than one run by Ford. So on a third down little pass stunt that you run. Pick your poison. They keep it with the workhorse on this drive. It's been Keith Ford. And he drags Dijon Harris for three yards. That should take us to the end of the third quarter. It always seems to be a very good game between Texas A&M and Arkansas. And the 2017 Southwest Classic matchup, no different as we head to the fourth quarter. The Razorbacks by four. Fourth quarter coming up from Arlington. That is about as big as a Razorback fan can get. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN and welcome back to AT&T Stadium here in Arlington. We start the fourth quarter. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams and the rest of our crew. Arkansas has a four point lead over Texas A&M. But the Aggies driving they're in plus territory second down and seven to start the fourth. Stay on schedule when you've stayed on schedule you have finished drives. Trevion Williams with a cutback reverses field with speed has the first down and more. Nice run. I missed him a week ago and then he's the home run hitter. They're going to use utilize all of them I think over the course of the season. But the first Texas A&M running back freshman to ever break that 1000 yard barrier. That's why. And he just runs right through and around Dwayne Eugene. The backside support had no chance. There's Williams again. This time dragged down after a gain of a couple by Dre Greenlaw. Arkansas will have an even more decided time of possession advantage than they had so far today and AM creeping closer consuming clock on this drive second and eight the toss Travion Williams to the 30 yard line brings up a big third down third and about three and a half just inside the 30 no pre snap penalties you can live in this the entire quarter. I mean, you avoid that holding call, that false start, that fumbled snap. You can live in third and three. I really do believe if you're patient with the calls this entire quarter, now you got to go finish it. Beyond Williams has the first down. It's a really nice job there by the big fellows on the left side of that AM line. By getting that push right off the snap right there. Coda Martin, the big left tackle, doing his job creating that early movement. Hitch out to Kirk with a blocker in front. Three yards to the 21 yard line. Just getting used to saying it. three yards, four yards, three yards, right? I mean, that is the uh, the bend, but don't break. Don't break off an explosive play. If you're Arkansas, you want to make AM and this freshman quarterback and play caller continue to earn it. Inside the 20 yard line, maybe inside the 19, Dre Greenlaw brings down Travion Williams, brings up another big third down, third and five. How much bend but don't break does Arkansas play on third down? Do they bring pressure here? I think it'll be pretty standard. They ran a stunt earlier and got gas. Play your standard football. They bring pressure off the edge. One on one in the end zone. There's the lob. Incomplete through the hands of Aaron Hansford, the tight end. 
Pretty good coverage from the safety Santos Ramirez, but it looked catchable. Yeah, that's your captain. That's your one-on-one. -on -one. You do bring five. Nothing exotic here. This is just your 50-50 ball. You'll hear coaches say it all the time. Got to make plays. I think it's too simple. I like to always boil it down to just that, but that ball is in the hands of Hansford, and he can't find it. Daniela Camera already one for one. This one from 10 yards further, though, to try and make it a one-point game. And he has it right down the middle. Arkansas maintains their lead. Texas A&M gets three early in the fourth. Might all be quarterbacks, but it seems if there's one guy that could crash that party, it might be Saquon Barkley. Yep, and tonight he and McSorley will be their show. Pretty standard basic defense at Iowa. They don't do a ton of things. And that dynamic of those two destroyed them last year. Barkley over 200 yards against the Hawkeyes. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Right now, not much of a problem for Ohio State against UNLV. The rest of the top ten either has yet to play or has the week off. And is there a sneaky one there at number eight, Michigan on the road at Purdue? Yeah, I think so. I think both of those, seven and eight, Washington going to get tested for the first time, do it without a starting quarter. Their cornerback, their starting tight end, their number two running back going to Colorado. I heard Herbie this morning pick the Buffaloes, say quietly one of the more difficult places, home field advantages you're going to find is Colorado. And remember, they got ripped in the title game last year. That'll be a good one tonight. Six of the top eight on the road. I heard something Reese Davis said earlier today, stat he gave on college game day, that four ranked teams last week lost on the road. Chase Hayden tripped up at the line after a game of a couple, maybe two and a half. Jarrett Johnson was there to make another stop for AM. This becomes an awfully big drive. 11 and a half to go. We talked about that time of possession, been such a priority for years and years and years for Brett Bielema. And then also such a disappointment that in this game, they have not been able to get over the top, but not been able to finish it. In the final 15 minutes, the reason why he's lost all four to someone in this matchup. Hayden, blockers out in front. To the 29-yard line, that's a gain of another yard and a half. And beyond Renfro, another true freshman. So many freshmen playing key roles for both of these teams. Made the tackles. So here's a big play. Third down and six to try and hold on to the football and a one-point lead. Typically when you go to that armband, what? It's a little longer call. Right? Typically something with movement and shifting in formations that you're trying to get to one of your specialty calls here in third down. Allen in trouble. Down he goes. Landis Durham got back there again. Got some help from Otaro Alaka. And there was just nowhere to go. I mean, this is one of those situations, you know, if he could throw it when he wanted to right there, he had a shallow cross with O'Grady. That is covered. Cornelius is out. He's got a youngster who's trying to separate on an option route over the middle field. That is covered. It is sticky everywhere. And it was hot inside that pocket. Another sack for Texas A&M. You talked about David Williams being pretty good at picking up the blitz. Last time he could not stop Otaro Alaka. And that is the sixth sack of the game. Another fair catch for Kirk. Flag down. Forty-yard punt. We'll check the penalty marker. The official without his hat, so I'm assuming it was a player going out of bounds. Number 82 of the kicking team went out of bounds on his own and came back in bounds during the down. Five yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the return. First down. So that gives five more yards of field position to Texas A&M. They'll have it at their own 47 yard line, down by one when we return.
by Toyota. Let's go places. It's a rivalry game that dates back to 1903 between Texas A&M and Arkansas. Back to their old days in the Southwest Conference. It was suspended in 1991 because Arkansas went to the SEC. They renewed in 2009. But then in 2012, Texas A&M joined the SEC. So now it's a conference matchup again, as well as the Southwest Classic rivalry game here in Arlington. Play action for Kellen Mond on first down. He wants it all. Man for man coverage. Incomplete. Out through Clyde Chris, the redshirt freshman. And another freshman, Cameron Curl, was in perfect position. Allison? Well, you watch Kellen Mond on the sideline, guys. It's so interesting. He's such a sponge, right? Like, here he is, a true freshman, playing with a lot of true freshman receivers. So he's not one of those guys that just goes and sits on the end of the bench away from everybody else. He is constantly talking to coaches, asking questions, talking to his young receivers. What are you seeing? What do I need to do better? You can tell he's still trying to absorb and learn this offense along with a lot of his teammates. He's going to run it here. And he's close to a first down. Again, a true freshman from the IMG Academy. That's where he played last season. Then enrolled at AM in January. So he was here for the entire spring and all the way through summer and fall camp. So has a little more practice time yeah. under his belt than many true freshmen might by and, enrolling in January. And knew he was going to get an opportunity to play. And someone said that. That UCLA game, they told him you were going to play at some point. Just did not know he'd be thrown in the fire in that fourth quarter. Third down and one. Right up the middle, Keith Ford. He might be gone. Touchdown. Well, this AM O-line, they've taken some heat this season. There have been a lot of guys that have played. Ten of them, in fact. Six different combinations last week. Can't do it better than that. Keaton Sutherland, your big right tackle there. That is tremendous movement. And Coach Sumlin said to us this week, Keith Ford, got a little different juice this week. You know, he watched true freshman last week. He watched Bussy. He watched others find some success. And now with the third lead change this half, Evan Sumlin wants this thing back on even numbers. So up five, they're going to go for two to try and make it a seven-point lead. And Ford's been running with some urgency. And this is absolutely the right call with eight minutes to go. Ford stays in the game after a 44-yard touchdown run to try and go up seven. Mont, a hitch, a little hook and ladder play that doesn't go anywhere. Jamon Osborne tried to find Ford on the quick hitter on the outside. And the hook and ladder comes up short, so it's only a five-point lead for Texas A&M. That's pretty cool. That was there. Good call, Sumlin. Noel Mazzoni kind of liked that little wrinkle. They're saying, we don't need a bye week. We work on these two-point plays all August long, and they get what they want. But the young freshman quarterback, or wide receiver, excuse me, just a little bit too much heat there. Couldn't put in the belly. Couldn't finish the two-pointer. We've got a great one here in Arlington. Five-point lead for Texas A&M. Now we'll see if the Razorbacks can answer. Maybe on Warren. It's lit up at about the 21-yard line. Brock, let's take a look at our Napa Auto Parts drive recap. Well, they're going to answer. They're going to do it on the ground, and that's exactly what Texas A&M has done on the other side. Over 250 rushing yards now. Three different Aggies. Up over 80 yards rushing, and it's been the third down killer. The explosive play right there. Another 44-yarder. This Razorback team came in defensively with just three of those plays. Over 20 yards in the first couple games. Very different story today. And, and a bunch of them. Three, in fact, on third down against Paul Rhodes defense. Devois Whaley. Tough sledding for three yards. That was a really nice play by inside linebacker Tyrell Dodson. Rock has been active as well. Those two linebackers. You know, we talk about Saquon Barkley, how impressive he is in a weight room. 
It was Dotson, number 25, that squatted 675 pounds that went viral over the offseason as well. <laughs> His mom called him Bam Bam as a kid because he broke everything. She said one time he broke the gas cap on her car, just <laughs> unscrewing it. Linebackers. Allen, he's got one-on-one -on -one down the sideline, but basically giving up on that route was Jones. Let's head down to Allison. Austin Allen has come off the field just frustrated a lot this game. You know, he's, he's been on his teammates for some of the mistakes, and he's just got a lot of questions. At one point, he went to his center, Frank Ragnow, who you know, has such a great relationship with a lot of trust, and he's just like, what's up, man? Like, what is going on up there? You've seen Arkansas call a lot of entire offensive team huddles. Their offensive line coach did, Brett Bielema as well, and his message was pretty clear to linemen, stay up, keep locking everybody else, lock in and fight to the finish of this one. Third down and seven. Allison will see if they can protect him here. Play clock at four. Allen, good, clean pocket, and he delivers a strike to Cheyenne O'Grady. It's amazing when you give a redshirt senior just a little bit of opportunity. He's had his nose bloodied. His emotions have been all over the place today. And I think rightfully so, frustration, because it's been everybody up front, but all of them do their job. A little nickel pressure there. A good enough pickup to give him air. That's all he needs. He doesn't need a totally clean pocket. He just needs some space around him. And there's O'Grady with a massive third down conversion. You don't have it out on the perimeter. Find other answers. And this tight end crew is a good one. Remember, no Jared Cornelius left with an ankle injury. And around. Up against the short sideline, and T.J. Hammond still able to turn not much into something. He picks up eight yards. But there was ever a day to have the ESPN app. It is your fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, highlights all season long. Just download the ESPN app. Start streaming now with six of the top ten on the road today. Our game. Part of a group of games just kicking off what should be a great day in college football. Room for Chase Hayden. Keeps the pile moving. Inside the AM 45 yard line. And how massive was that third down conversion? Right? We talk all the time about tempo teams needing to move the chains. Well, teams that huddle up do as well. You need to just be able to relax and get in that huddle. Dan Enos, get to the rest of the plays. And a pretty elaborate play sheet that you've got with multiple formations, but it really was set up by that third down conversion between QB and O'Grady. Another handoff to Hayden. Maybe a half yard. Again, Otaro Alaka. Came through to make the stop. Otaro Alaka almost played for Texas. Ended up at Texas A&M when Mac Brown left Austin in 2013. Well, if you've got a shot play you like, you're in an area of the field right now that if you trust your guys can block it up. You know, maybe a shot play out play pass to a tight end. This is typically the area of the field like to take it. Four-man rush. Allen. He will take a shot into double coverage. And he's got a walk-in touchdown to Jonathan Nance. Two-point conversion attempt now for Arkansas as they will have a chance to push the lead up to three with 521 to go. It wasn't terribly elaborate. It was just a post route against some coverage. It's supposed to be deeper than the deepest. And it wasn't. And Bielema trying to get the attention. And he wants the ball on the left hash mark here, trying to set this play up. He wants it on the left middle here, and you have that opportunity and right as a coach, play caller. Now he'll want the reset of the play clock to huddle up, make sure everything gets right, and that ball is where he wants it. 
and m went for two and missed. This compels Arkansas to now go for two to get it back on a number. That makes sense for the Razorbacks trying to go up three. Oh, we got a good one, don't we? Play action. Allen, a throwback all alone. Jeremy Patton for the two. You asked about these young receivers. Cornelius is out. Who's going to respond? Is the quarterback going to keep his cool enough to, to allow those guys to make plays for him? And Jonathan Nance just does just that, runs behind the safety, the huge explosion play of themselves for the Razorbacks to get it going. And then how does a 250-pound tight end sneak through on a two-point? Just like this. What a game we have in Arlington. Bob Schusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams, the Southwest Classic as Arkansas and Texas A&M. Not only trade 44 yard touchdowns on their last two possessions, but trade the lead for the fourth time in the second half. Can AM now answer? From the goal line, it's Christian Kirk. Danger. Look out. Down the sideline. He might go. Wow. Touchdown. As that kickoff was in the air, I said, can a and answer? I guess the question answered quickly by Kristen Kirk. And I said danger because when you have green grass versus that dude, you're in trouble. Five punt return touchdowns in his career. He's going to do that in the NFL for a long time as well. An enormous crease in lane, way too much space and air, and Kirk delivers. An incredible game continues. Back to Adnan in the studio. Thanks, Bob. Maybe an upset coming here for Florida State. Facing NC State in the fourth quarter, Ryan Finley, a little solo pass to Jalen Samuels, who's been everywhere today. 11-point lead, under eight to go, ESPN2 and ABC. Bob? Well, Adnan, five career punt return touchdowns for Christian Kirk. That's the first time he has taken back a kickoff return for a touchdown and here it is Brock I think the first time the clicker is going to come into play here on a special teams play but check it out man once you have that kind of gap and look at all that space quarterbacks love space they love air you know who else does guys run 4-4 and you give a head start with that much green grass it's over it's you and a kicker and you're done I mean, you're just not going to run 4-4. You know, there's lane discipline. You hear that all the time. But to me, more than anything else, punt returns or kick returns, you can watch it in the first couple seconds. And if there is gaps and there is space and there is air and you've got an electric guy like Kirk, I'm going to say it again. He gone. That was a little better? Not even close. Gosh. Last season, AM won 45 to 24, but the previous two years before that, this game went to overtime. So they have played some terrific games between these two teams. And later today on ESPN, we've got two more terrific games for you. We'll start in the Big 12. Number 16, TCU taking on Mason Rudolph. And number six, Oklahoma State. That game at 3.30 to be followed by an SEC battle between some Bulldogs. Number 17, Mississippi State taking on Number 11, Georgia. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Uh, and that latter one with Nick Chubb is going to be one physical affair. Mississippi State showed last week against, I think, a pretty physical LSU team. But they've grown up an awful lot for Dan Mullen. And Austin Allen's going to ask his young people right now to grow up all over the place on that O-line and perimeter. Play action. 
A throwback screen. Austin Cantrell. Blockers in front. Another chunk play. Inside the 45-yard line. Well designed by the Razorbacks. And they're right back in business at the AM 44. This tight end class is as good as any team. And the timing and the patience to do that with Jared Johnson, the sacker bearing down on you. And to not freak out if you're Austin Allen there, but to let that rush come and let your lineman get out in front. And Cantrell is typically the one that finishes blocks as he has today. It's O'Grady that makes the passes and the screens devised to him. A tendency breaker going to Cantrell and he delivers. All the time in the world for Arkansas. Four and a half minutes to go and they have all three timeouts as well. Another play action fake. Allen looking for the wheel route down the sideline to Williams. Flag down back near the line of scrimmage. That's going to go back, I think, against Arkansas with a motion man and a young player that is just moving towards the line of scrimmage. Thought he was going to get away with it. But he did not. Illegal motion. The motion man was going towards the line of scrimmage at the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's a backbreaker for the Hogs, as it was another big play, but now they back up near midfield. Nine penalties for Arkansas. Yeah, and it's right to the top of your screen here. You're going to see it. I believe that is Petway, and it's just that last motion. Trying to run that crackback action. If you just hop forward, that was the right call, looking right down the line of scrimmage. Tight ends and backs. The perimeter people can't do it. You've got enough other artillery to find big plays. Allen steps up. Bullets one over the middle, and it's dropped. Jonathan Nance knew he was going to take a shot, and a very late flag is thrown. Miles Jones came up and he popped Jonathan Nance. Personal foul. Targeting. Number 10, defense against a defenseless receiver. 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. This, this play be... is now under video review. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, Bob. The personal foul was called. That cannot come off the books. The targeting can. Defenseless, there's no doubt. So forcible contact to the head or neck area. It's a good call. And that's the true freshman, Jones. And, and defensive players, I know. I've already gotten some texts from some of my defensive friends. They really don't like this. They really have a hard time with this, with a player that is just being reactionary. Yeah, we're watching it in super slow-mo. He's absolutely defenseless. There is no doubt about it. The defensive guys are going to say, what do you want that corner to do? And I would say, lower the strike zone. Miles, you, you just got to do the best you can in that moment of truth, and I know it happens so fast, but it is a defenseless player, and as best you can, you have got to dip your shoulder, and you know what? I have seen him do it at the NFL level. I have watched Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, two of the most vicious tacklers in the NFL. I've seen it every Sunday in my hometown, and they have lowered the strike zone, and for a young freshman, that is what he is going to have to learn, is you can make just as vicious a shot, and you can do it in the sternum and ribs. On one hand, it's almost impossible in this era of the NFL worrying about CTE, concussion protocol being looked at at the pro level and the college level with independent neurologists on the sideline when you live in that world. And if you're going to knock football for what was probably a long history of turning their heads the other way and not paying as much attention to head injuries yep. and then have a problem with that call. That is the type of hit that they want out of the sport. Don't hit the other player in the head. Hit him in the sternum. That should be able to jar the ball free just as much. Here's the call. After the video review, there is no foul for targeting. The rule play results in an incomplete pass. Second down. I still think that was a good call. I, I would have held targeting up there, but they take the yep. targeting off the board. I think they're going to say shoulder bomb. I think they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the young freshman corner that the shoulder contact came not to the head but to the shoulder pads first right they're going to say he did in that moment he used his helmet to hit the shoulder pad and not the head or the neck area 
very close. It is a very close call. But there's also a large part of me, not only are NFL guys standing in their living rooms cheering, there's a large part of me that says, don't let a call dictate this game, how good it has been, how hard these kids have played. Let it be determined in the final four minutes. And they did take the personal foul away. They've got it set up, second down and 15. That's just a straight incompletion. Four-man rush. Allen looking downfield. He's looking deep for Nance. He's got another inside the five-yard line. First and goal at the four. Junior college transfer. Cornelius is out. He has not returned. Who is going to step up? Who is going to be the one to differentiate and separate himself? Well, it's going to be Jonathan Nance on the last two series. And they're going quickly. David Williams. Touchdown. Man, we have seen surrender cobras all over the place. Will you guys stop it in the stands? Don't surrender. <laughs> Take it in and enjoy this. Holy smokes. Six second half lead changes. And now Arkansas will line up for the point after. Not a gimme. Connor Limpert's got it. Not a gimme with the new kicker. You better watch every one of them. And stop surrendering, fan bases. This thing is going to go down to the wire. Tremendous push. Love the tempo. Love the execution within the five-yard line if you're Arkansas. Couldn't do this against TCU. Spent an awful lot of time. Come back to business. Put the pads on and hit a lot more. Maybe other teams would do, but when you want to be a physical team at the point of attack, you're going to have to do that in your bye week. Two teams that have now combined for 31 points here in the fourth quarter with 3.39 to go. And Texas A&M has all the time in the world for a quick strike up-tempo offense. Now, they did use a timeout on that fourth down decision earlier in the half, but still with two left and 3.39 on the clock down by three. I'll tell you one other little play. First of all, I don't think I kicked this to Christian Kirk. I'm going to pooch kick this. I may even decide to squib kick this thing. I cannot, if I'm Arkansas, allow number three to have any kind of space in this ball in his hands. That surrenders some real estate as breaking free with a convoy. Gillespie, the 12th man. Cullen Gillespie, the former walk on who has the honor of wearing that 12th man, number 12, for Texas AM. Gets a kickoff return and great field position. Yeah, there's a lot of youngsters in this game, but this kid's been here four years. He's earned it. He was their special teams MVP a year ago. He doesn't fair catch. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to surrender. No, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to break tackles. I'm going to make some moves. And I'm going to set my offense up for some success. What a play, man. Some of you fans in the stands are surrendering. These guys on the field are not. That's the danger you run when you get paranoid about kicking it deep to a great return it is. man. It is. You might give up great field position, and this is the best for Texas A&M to start so far today. I'd also like to pooch it beyond that second line. I'm also not doing that, or oh, I'm kicking a really hard squib kick down the middle of the field. The 3-31, 3-3-1. And at your level, where you call games for 17 years, those kickers? They can do that. Kickers at this level, it's a pooch kick, and you just kind of do the normal down and distance, very hard for them to see and to judge, kind of like pro golfers hitting their wedge. They're pretty confident placing it wherever. Collegiate kickers typically just kind of have one spot and one job to do it. Play action for Kellen Mond. He's going deep. And overthrows everyone intended for Damian Ratley. Let's go back to Adnan. All right, Bob, thank you very much. NC State and Florida State.
Second and nine. Oh, Wolfpack. The safety, so it gives the Seminoles a bit of a chance, but they're down by nine, under five to go. ESPN 2 ABC. Bob? All right, Adnan, 323 to go here. Second down and 10. On a keeper, it's Kellen Mond. Third down coming for Texas A&M. Daniel LaCamera, his career-long 49. He is 0 for 1 this season from 50 plus, 0 for 2 for his career. So they would like to get him comfortably inside of 45 yards to know that they've got him where they want him. Third down and six. Ford. And boy, does this create a decision for Kevin Sumlin. He's got two timeouts. With 2.35 to go, Brock, you're probably compelled to go for it here on fourth well, down. You are, and I'll tell you, that last third down, watching Kevin Sumlin, he already had the conversation with Noel Mazzoni. That's not decided now. That was decided on that third down call that you've got two downs to get six yards. This might be the game. Fourth down and three. And you freeze them. Try to get the hard count, but more importantly, try to get their cards shown of what they're going to do defensively and what matchup you want to go to. Play clock down to seven. Only a three-man rush on the slant. Easy pitch and catch. Damian Ratley wide open for a first down. That's the one you want to get to, and we've seen that slant work a couple times. Now watch the tempo is they're going to try to establish a run. That's two huge fourth down conversions in this game on that route. Ford drags Dre Greenlaw for about three yards. Best advice I ever heard as a young quarterback in these moments, play fast but never in a hurry. Pick up your pace, but you're going to set the tone for everybody around you. You cannot be in a panic, even though it's the first time in this big a moment you've ever been in in college. Mond on a keeper. First down again for the 22-yard line. 118 to go. And Arkansas fans are saying, "Win, when are we going to stop Noel Mazzoni and Kevin Sumlin when it matters the most? We've been in this spot in fourth quarters in this very matchup. When will be the time the Bielema and the Hogs finish and close out a game instead of watching AM win a close one in this battle? About a 39-yard field goal from right here. Ford looking for some room. Stood up shy of the 20-yard line. 54 seconds to go, and let's see if Texas A&M will use their second timeout here, and it looks like they will. Man, these kids are playing hard, Bob. <laughs> Both sides. And this is just the start of the day Whoa. in college football, because tonight after UCLA and Stanford, that will wrap the day in college football. Stick around for Sports Center at night. Stan Verrett and Linda Cohn will be out in L.A. They'll have the best of a college football Saturday, the baseball playoff races, the tour championship, NFL news heading into tomorrow's games. Sports Center at night, also streaming live on the ESPN app yep. tonight after Stanford, UCLA. That's a big one. Stanford lost a week ago to San Diego State, trying to avoid a third loss here in the month of September. And this is an awfully big one. Under a minute to go, all the talk that we had leading up to this game. I am sure all the talk that's going on right now in living rooms all across Arkansas and all through Texas as well. Can Kevin Sumlin do it again? Can he find a way to beat this team when it matters in the fourth quarter? And when will Brett Bielema in year five get his first win against a true freshman in this case? They've taken shots, they've thrown slant routes, been slants or go routes. And then it's been a heavy dose of that run game, 272 yards of it on the ground. Mons looking for room. Down to the 15-yard line. Dijon Harris made the stop. And now if you want to score a touchdown, if you're Texas A&M, you have to show a sense of urgency. Just playing for the field goal and overtime, which I can't believe they are. But now the clock starts to become a factor with only one timeout left. Third down and four. Ford, first down for the 10 yard line. That'll stop the clock for the moment. 26 seconds to go. 
And if that clock starts to roll again, they have to get set if they want to have a chance at the end zone. I would spike it. I mean, look at this. I would spike it. Save these four, five, six seconds. That's a play or two. And the 16 seconds to go. 13 seconds to go. It's four. Now you have to call timeout. I don't understand that. Kevin Sumlin calls timeout with eight seconds remaining. It is clock management. We see it time and again, and I know it is a true freshman. 26 seconds after that conversion. 26. What are you trying to do? Give, us, give myself as many bites at the apple as I can. Right? Give myself a chance. Spike the ball, and you're going to have 24 seconds. A timeout. You're going to get more chances. Instead, you let 10 seconds, 12 seconds come off the clock, and with one timeout and eight seconds, or no timeouts, no timeouts now, in just eight seconds. Oh, curious. Well, you lose a snap. If you do the math, yep. you lose a snap because with eight seconds to go, you should have time to take a shot at the end zone and then kick the field goal, but it's only second down. So and now the, you'd be kicking the field goal on third down rather than on fourth down. If you show a sense of urgency there, you get to run two and, plays instead of one. You have about eight reminders for your quarterback. Don't take a sack. Don't scramble. Don't. I mean, and all those things, and some of it you don't have time to explain. You're going to trust his instincts now, his game management to understand the magnitude of this moment. They're you know not what? even taking nope. a chance. Took it out of his hands. They are not even going to let the true freshman with eight seconds take a shot at the end zone. And now Brett Bielema will ice Daniel LaCamera. And that is an indicator yes. on where a head coach is with a true freshman still at quarterback. Do you trust him to manage eight seconds. with only eight seconds on the clock? The answer is no. Kick the field goal and play for overtime as we go back to Adnan. All right, Bob, just want to let everyone know, TCU, Oklahoma State, that's right, Kenny Hill going up against Mason Rudolph, two electrifying offenses in what should be a great Big 12 showdown. That game is going to start on ESPN News. It's also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app, and then it'll be right here on ESPN once your game concludes. Back to more drama in Arlington with Bob and Brock. So here's a field goal opportunity, Adnan, to tie it. 27 yards away with eight seconds to go for the junior. Daniel LaCamera. And we are tied with four seconds remaining. Yeah, we'll just go to overtime for the third time in five years in this matchup with Bielema and Sumlin. What valuable experience. You, you just, and we talk about this every week. And do you do, it, do so at the NFL level too? Do you find these game management situations come into play at the NFL level as they do collegiately? Because that's 10, 12 seconds right there. If you just spike it on first down, you have three plays and a timeout. Yeah, even more so in the NFL because, as you know, with the clock rules, it's a shorter game. There are fewer possessions. More often than not, it does come down to the very end of the game and trying to manage the clock. But spiking it, living to fight another day, holding on to that timeout keeps the entire playbook at your disposal, but the lack of experience and awareness in that situation not just costs them a couple of downs, costs them even a chance to try for a touchdown. And obviously, Kevin Sumlin just didn't trust a true freshman quarterback with eight seconds on the clock to try for the end zone from just inside the 10-yard line. And we're probably not the only ones right now remembering what happened at the end of the second quarter with a touchdown that came off the board or should have been called a touchdown and instead settling for a field goal as Mon was called out of bounds. Squid kick. That is scooped up and bottled up. And that will take us to overtime. We'll step aside for a couple of minutes and bring you back overtime. We'll continue in just a moment. The Southwest Classic has been just that this year between AM and Arkansas. Adnan, thanks very much. Just about set for overtime. Can I have the toss? Just like before the game, our is going to call the toss. The options for the winner are offense first, defense first. Seems like our referee has forgotten to turn his microphone on, so we are about to have the coin toss before we begin overtime. Tails, you won the toss. You want to play defense? Arkansas won the toss. Arkansas 
Arkansas has won the toss, has elected to go on defense first. We will play the first overtime period in this end zone. So it's Texas A&M's football to begin overtime. And someone probably reminded a few guys, maybe even his staff, been here, done that. Should be no surprise in the Southwest Classic. We've had two overtime battles with Bielema. There's so much on the line, obviously, for both of these programs. Head coaches begin SEC play. Someone hasn't done it with a true freshman quarterback before. And we felt some of that, right? Just that there's no substitute for experience. The right call to take it out of his hands with eight seconds to go. There's no doubt about it. And now you don't have as many of the clock management and game management issues. Now you have the execution of that run game. 284 yards on the ground for AM. They will rely upon that. And when we see Christian Kirk in space, I don't want to lose this game without Christian Kirk getting at least one bite of the apple here in overtime and making sure I trust my run game that's put me in this position of 43 points on the board. That's Brock Ewart. I'm Bob Wachusen. Allison Williams down on the field. And for the third time in the last four years, this Southwest Classic between AM and Arkansas goes to overtime. Play action. Mock. Blocked on the way out. Up the seam, he was looking for the quick hitter to Jamon Osmond, and it was knocked down. And now with a first down pass, you put a little bit more pressure. That's more than likely a run here on second down. Give yourself a manageable situation. Travion Williams. Big third down coming now. Ejon Harris deflected that last pass and now gets the next tackle. A gain of maybe a yard and a half. Third down and a long eight. In big moments thus far, we have seen the slant route come into play. Kirk at times used to clear it out. Two fourth down conversions have come on slant routes. Been go routes, been slant routes. They've been the go-to marks in this situation. Kristen Kirk in motion. Mond, no one home. Flag down. Jamon Osman got tied up with the true freshman Cameron Curl. Test interference, number two, defense. Kelly includes an automatic first down. And Bielema is going to be frustrated. There's no way this ball is going to be caught. But they caught the freshman corner. Oh wow! I don't. I said earlier, let the kids de define the outcome. Right? I said that on the targeting call and everything else. So you don't think the timing of that route, or he could, Osmond's yes. ability he, to come back he on that route, is affected he, by the fact that the defensive he, back he has a fistful of his he jersey? Has a fistful, you see a fistful of jersey. If that back judge sees a fistful of jersey, then you have to call it. Yes, but you have to call that. Well, that makes because he, first he does goal. have a chance to come back. I just let the kids define the outcome of the game. Not a call. Fade into the end zone. Christian Kirk. He's got it. An a and touchdown. That starts overtime. There he is. That's the guy that had to touch it in overtime. Took off the turn touchdown earlier. He has been a force. He's been a little bit more of a decoy at times, but not this time. Oh, what a great red zone concept. And Bond can't throw it any better. That is his best throw on time of this game. Puts it in the spot where his one guy can get it. That is a tough cover there for anybody, but especially a safety for Ramirez. Beautifully timed, beautifully executed. And Bob, if you're right, if there is a handful of jersey and that back judge sees that jersey pulled, you do have to make that call. Well, you said that you wanted Christian Kirk, if you're Texas A&M, to get a bite of the apple. He got the most important bite of the apple on that overtime possession. Here's the camera. How many momentum swings can we handle? Now can Arkansas answer? So here's the call. It's third and nine. You do your work on first and second down. And this is a true freshman out there. He's playing because of the injury to Poli earlier. It is a comeback route. There's some hand fighting. And does he have that jersey? It looked like he had a handful of the collar of that jersey almost on the entire route. 
And that is what that back judge is staring at and looking at the whole time. That is his judgment and decision. And those guys are trained in having you know, crash course for one spring game. You are trained to look for those things and look for that jersey tug and look for that little pole. And that true freshman, it's not just a true freshman quarterback. It is a true freshman cornerback that is understanding the magnitude of this one and that call as well. Well, now you've got a senior quarterback with a chance to answer Arkansas's opportunity in overtime. David Williams makes a man miss in the backfield. That's a nice run. A six-yard gain on first down to begin the Razorbacks' possession. Now here's the difference between the two. You don't have Christian Kirk. You don't have that guy on your side. You may have in Cornelius. He left this game earlier with a lower leg injury, not to be seen again. But what you do have is a mix of run game, play pass, tight ends, and fullbacks that have been difference makers in this second half. Williams, a couple of yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and a yard and a half in the red zone. Austin Allen comes to the sideline in the Cole Kelly package. Six foot seven, 268 pounds. That quarterback in again for the Hogs. Short yardage. Kelly will run it. First down. What they call that package was swoops last year in Texas, the 18 wheeler. You're going to have to come up with something at 6'7, 265. <laughs> that is a massive, that is the biggest quarterback in college football. And it's been effective today. Very, very effective. Play action, pump fakes, looking for the end zone. He's got a man out of the back of the end zone for Jeremy Patton. He couldn't get a foot down. And there was one little hesitation, one little flinch there by Allen as he was trying to read his tight end and where he was going to break that route off. You saw it earlier with Kirk. He just zoomed out of that corner route. Allen is looking at his big junior college tight end, and you can see him shaking his head. He's trying to figure out the angle that he was going to take on that corner route, and that's why he clutched. And the minute you clutch in a condensed area in the red zone, it's going to be too late, out of bounds. A toss to Deb Wawele with a cutback to the 11. Picked up about four. Debian Renfro made the stop, called a three-yard game, brings up third down and seven in what is obviously four-down territory in so, overtime. So two plays to get seven-plus yards here. Still get that first down. Two plays to get seven yards. That's what Bielema is saying to Enos, his offensive coordinator. And I'd be very leery of dropping back in conventional means in a pocket. Six sacks, quarterback been battered and hammered. And play pass. I'm using my tight ends, my backs. And I may even run it to get two two plays to get those seven yards. Play action. Allen looking end zone. Intercepted, and that'll end the game. Armani Watts, the exclamation point. Texas A&M does it again to Arkansas. tried Bob they tried to sneak the tight end out of the backfield he was the fullback on that play but Armani Watts 
One of the best at taking the ball away. Eight career interceptions, add one more. That is number nine. Add another win in this rivalry matchup. And Armani is sitting back there. He is hoping, he is hoping this throw comes so he can undercut it and be the game changer that he has been over the last couple years. You go back, a game. Yeah, and you go back to who you are, right? You go back to what you do in the biggest of moments, You're trying to get your tight ends and your backs involved. And Armani sees it, he reacts. And Allen says, my goodness, that close yet again in this matchup against those guys. So the true freshman quarterback, Kellen Mond, and a and they beat Brett Bielema by seven in overtime. For Allison Williams and Brock Heward, I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Arlington, another good one coming now. Let's go to TCU, Oklahoma State.